Or tell the news. Or tell them what's going on tonight. You're doing a lot of talking over there. Hi, everybody. So, what's the matter? My wife cannot find me. Danger, danger, danger. Right now it says I have two thumbs up, but no viewers. Now I see Micro Halloween and Realms. Hello, fine gentlemen. Oh, Patrick Redding, Misty, John C, Spastic Pug, Madeline. Wife, finish us up here with the shout outs. Susan Atai, Lindy Vito, Kinsari Shigo, Jesse Papa Bear, South Omaha Horror. Uh, Realms loved the video today. He has, says he has made one of the statues. Really? That's awesome. That's great. Scuba Steve. Brian, Harry Beasy, Stevenson Metal, K and T. Hello, Joe. Hello. Hey everybody. Joshua Howard. Founded. Christina Matai. Al Mothra Art. Big Mothes. John C. Brian David. Alright, so uh tonight I'm not gonna be sculpting. Um Yes, I still have a bunch of stuff on my list, but I'm already, I'm still in mold debt. I haven't molded the Jaguar. I haven't molded Leech, so I'm still in mold debt from those two. Um, so I don't want to add to it. And I have orders to get out. So I have all these masks back here to paint and to get started painting. So these five kids are on the block tonight. Tomorrow is going to be, tomorrow daytime, is going to be uh, Cujo Thursday. I'm going to finish up Cujo. Uh, which I don't think will take that long because I'm, you know, ahead on that project. Uh, but Cujo will be finished up tomorrow. Today, we are going to paint some mascos. All of these guys are ready. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen the cleaned blank of the Gordiator. I don't know if you guys saw this or not. Here's the Gordiator. Nice. Clean blank, ready for paint. They would like to know how the doggos are. Doggos. Guts. Yeah, right now it's uh, WWD, World Wrestling, Dog Wrestling Federation, uh, over here. Which every now and then in the living room, I will announce it like it's a BJJ contest, uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Because they actually have some pretty slick moves. Uh, sometimes it reverts to dominant humping, and that's awkward. But uh, not that often. And uh, here is Bella. She's rather chill because it is thunderstorming outside. Uh, another reason I didn't want to necessarily go. Oh, notifications are on. Even I heard that one. Sorry, guys. Sound mute. Okay. So yes, yeah, doggos are fine. Bella is uh, riding out the storms. Um, She's more chill during rain and stuff, so there you go. Great YouTube Wednesday. So well, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, I'm I'm glad. That's that's one that I've been I've been wanting to redo that one. I don't know five six years, and I finally got around to doing it. Nathan Jones loved it as well. Masks are awesome. I love the fucking head. Hey, thanks. That is our Gordiator, which is like. Gladiator, but it's a gourd. Alex says, good lord, they are huge. Yes, uh, our dogs right now are about 100 pounds each, give or take. And uh, they are 10 months old. So they only grow for the first two years. I really want to come to Monster Camp next year. So Great, come on. We'd love to have you. Rob says, boots all around, plastic pug. I'm going to turn my house to a monster house and put the eyes in the windows. Yeah, that's awesome. That would be fun. Nathan Jones says, I'm going to try and save up to come to Monster Camp next year. Also, very cool. I'm solid with work. Sorry, not sorry. Solver. Oh, yeah, for the puppies? Uh, we're not sorry either. We knew what we were getting into. Yeah, I put my... Uh, Put it, put it out in the wind, but I needed some big puppies. 
and uh, the Skullbergs came through for us. Mike's Haunted Woodworks are why we have three giant dogs. Yes. Actually, Alan's why we have three giant dogs. Hey, thank you. 50 people are watching. 50. Can you make a Debbie Gorgon? Uh, I have made so many Debbie Gorgons. The answer is yes. Yes, I can. Uh, normally, I make them for people who have a license to use them, like a theme park or a promotional event uh, for Stranger Things. Uh, so it's not normal, but I mean, it's it's possible that I make something similar. Awesome YouTube Wednesday says Lisa Art. Thank you. Let's get a bonus as well. I love the graveyard statues you made earlier, Tim Zarish. Thanks. Zarish. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint these two over here white because they're going to get a, a base. Um, and uh, I'm going to do some different stuff with some of them. So these two are going to brush painting is going to take the longest to dry. It's actively raining right now, so uh, it will, uh, it's, that means it's pretty humid out. So it'll take a while for this stuff to dry. Great to see a painting session. Body yeah. Made it to the start of the party. Good job. Hey, body geeks. Sounds like an exciting night. Miss this? Uh, it, it can be. I think people like to watch painting vids. You know what? And before this one is fine, I want to clean this one because this mold had been around a while before then. Yeah, uh, clean it with a little bit of alcohol. thing about Cabin in the Woods is that most of the characters in it are kind of tropes anyway. So have I made a merman? Yeah, I made about 10. Have I made zombies? Yeah, dozens. Uh, have I made uh, werewolves? Yeah, bunches. So um, yes is the short answer. Uh, but most of those are pretty tropey, you know. They even had like a, a knockoff of Cenobites. I mean, they're, they're all nods to other stuff. Um, not a lot of original creatures in that. I think better than watching paint dry, says Warmonger. I agree. I'm glad that you... It's a fast five-minute multi-mask painting like Ed did on Monster Day. Uh, I want these to be good. Uh, not that Ed isn't amazing, but uh, was that Ed's best work? No. Now, if I was throwing them out to a crowd, then um, sure, they are free masks that I'm just throwing out. But these are masks that people pay for because I like the monies. Yeah, but I also then I want to give them a good product. Is that Jack Frost? Uh, this will be Jack Frost, correct. Alan can stock his own cabin in the woods times 100. Very cool. Uh, I've made a lot of monsters. Night Terror Farm, Haunted Farm, there is your Jack Frost. Yeah, this is Jack Frost coming along. Uh, everybody else is ready to go. We're just waiting on him. And uh, I should have him wrapped up tomorrow and in a box. If you pay attention to the cabin in the woods, there's a CGI 3D scan of Alan in the movie at the 40 minute, 21 second mark. Okay. Probably a fat guy eating donuts or something. Probably what it is. KMT, do Halloween. We love our Jack Frost for y'all. Yeah, Jack Frost is kind of fun. Uh, I'm going to admit, I actually want to do a re-sculpt for him. And I'll probably write it on one of my big popsicle sticks so that I can do it down the road. And I love sculpting, and I kind of wish I was sculpting, 
but it is more responsible of me to get this done. And if people are going to watch me, I should probably kind of do the responsible thing. Michelle Schulte, good evening. Hello, Michelle Schulte. Michelle, did you get your notification that your Minotaur shipped today? What was the sculpture originally for? Uh, this was going to be another elf, just another one of the elves, but um, I, uh, I played a little bit more with the anatomy than I should have, so it ended up, it's an elf, but it's, uh, it's a little more angular, it's just a different look than what the rest of them are, so. I noticed a large dinosaur looking job on your yard during the YouTube Wednesday, what is that? That is a refurbishing project that I have. It's going to be a big dragon head that goes on top of my monster museum. Uh, it was originally an animatronic head made out of fiberglass. And so it's going to be a foam and patch uh, project that I've, I've just been too busy to get to. But eventually I'll get to it and it'll probably be either a YouTube Wednesday or during the week we'll do a couple live videos of me getting that done. Terrorist on says, I feel bad keeping Alan from sculpting. No, no, no. No, this is what I ought to be doing. Uh, it, would, it would be very irresponsible of me to have orders waiting to go out, you know, and, uh, and not jumping right on them in order to do something else. Um, when nothing on my list right now is an order. Sometimes uh, there's things that I have to sculpt because someone ordered a custom mask, and I always work those into the list. But, you know, right now I don't have that. Um, Cujo is one of my outstanding orders for Larry. And uh, I'm going to jump on Cujo tomorrow. But I didn't want to dedicate all night while you guys are watching to me working on one thing. It's going to take me a couple hours. I would rather you guys see progress on several masks. And our next ship day, I believe, is Friday. And I have the utmost confidence that Cujo can head out then. Michelle Schulte says she's starting barrel number two in the morning. Wow, that's awesome. Don't those look good? And you killed it, by the way. The pictures that I saw, you, you, they look amazing. And who, who, who was the guy that I saw painting it in your pictures? Was that a family member or? Christina Manti says, I just made my own pair of slider gloves and they look and sound good. Awesome. That's great. Joanna Crowley says, love the graveyard statue update. Thank you. Chad Smith says, good evening. Spastic Pug says, I love the elves. I just kind of see it as a Gerald Scar caricature of Thatcher. Okay. Sean Brakel says, good evening. Uh, Stanley would like to know, did you start his yet? Which one is Stanley's? Uh, Start, you started, yes, you are poured up, you are based, and the next thing that I do, and honestly, you are going to be right after Cujo, um, and uh, we'll be attaching, because you have like a lot of hair tentacles, dreadlocks, dreadlocks. yeah, that'll be happening. Perfect, hi, yeah. So yes, you're prepped, but it's not... Uh, it's not as underway as these guys. It's not a paint job away. He's in the queue. He's in the queue. Kirk Mattia says, I sent y'all a little something today. It should be there Monday. Do you Kirk, Kirk, that is so, I tell you what, you guys are so kind and nice. Uh, it, it is amazing the community of people that we kind of fell into during this whole COVID stuff. Lisa says, going to be doing lots of different techniques with these masks. I love anything winter thing. Me too, Lisa. Yeah, me too. Love it. Larry Hughes, there you are. Can't wait for Cujo to come home. He's coming. Cujo is coming. Michelle Schulte says, thank you, Alan. That is a cousin and he works at the haunt also. Cool. Sato K says, hello. Connie Pierce. Connie Pierce, you guys. That video hasn't even been up a, a day. Yeah, that, that's their habit. They're kind of building whatever it is I build, but uh, like the day it comes out. That's a, that's a heck of a pace. It, looks so good. it nearly kills me building them in one day. Y'all are working your butts off. And they already built two. And 
and gave him a, a lantern. Yeah. Tony says, love the YouTube Wednesday. We are working on a variation of the graveyard guy. Well, I'll have a variation of it. I don't know if it'll be an actual YouTube Wednesday. I think it will, uh, because it's a big enough video where it will be a, its own variation, I guess. But, um, what's that, honey? Um, I'll have a variation of it. I don't think next week, maybe the week after. send us an email and then we'll talk through it. That's how it normally goes. Or or they come from uh, Facebook, Messenger, or whatever. Susan Atai says YouTube Wednesday was awesome this week. Thank you. I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Christina Mantai would like to know, have you got a Chromis costume? Yes. Yes, I have. Um, I have been making Krampus masks since, let's see, well, I taught a class on Krampuses in 2008, uh, like explaining to people what they were, because at that time no one really knew. Uh, I love Krampus. It's one of my favorite monsters. I make so many farging cross Krampus costumes. Uh, yes, I have. I love them. Um, if you go on my personal Facebook page or go on uh, the Stilpy Studios Facebook page, You'll, you can see a lot of the Krampuses that I have made. Um, and actually, if you put in the YouTube search bar, Alan Hopps Krampus, I actually have a Krampus playlist of me making a full Krampus costume and several different techniques on horns uh, and me making just a bunch of Krampus masks. Uh, yes, I like me some Krampus, and I make a lot of Krampuses. So there you go. That's a very long answer to your question. Who better to learn from than someone who's guaranteed to make every mistake before you possibly can get to it yourself? <laughs> Rachel Powell says, good evening all, just got back from driving for a soccer field and my youngest turns 14 today. Wow, that's awesome. See you, Rachel. Joanne says, finally got to Lowe's and got a skeleton. Thanks for the info. Yeah, they're good stuff. But did you know that our 12-foot our, our skeleton is shipped? No, I didn't. Yeah. Oh, we got a notification! Almatra, looking forward to seeing all the paintwork tonight. Are you still thinking of doing a Halloween version of the Grave Digger Mask? Uh, if I have time, yes, I would love to. I'm very excited about that. I'm passionate about doing it. But it's, it's just it's a matter of time. Um, and, you know, if, if orders prevent me from doing personal projects, that's just how it is. That might be a good thing to do during the Monster Meeting, you know? Got yeah. It. That's true. Mask Mask lab. Yeah, mask lab. How heavy is a Krampus costume? It depends. Uh, but plan on it being anywhere from 15 to 75 pounds. Uh, could be could be more, could be less, but uh, plan on 15 to 75. Uh, are you going to go crazy with a basket? Are you, you know, there's there's a lot of options. Rachel says, my son 
was grinning from ear to ear at the shout out. Says, like Zoic Scoob, she said my name. Ha, <laughs> ha. Uh, let's see. So many people are watching. Scooby Doo references are fine. Scrappy Doo references, right out. Okay, so this one I brush painted, and this guy we're going to hit with the airbrush. Why? Because I felt brush painting took too long. This is the Harbor Freight $10 Quick Change Airbrush. It's one of my favorites for, uh, well, it's my favorites. It's just one of my favorites. But as far as basing out a mask, it is excellent. Jamie Paxson says, work smart, not hard. Yes. Well, it's also, it's so just muggy out right now that I'm brushing this around and it just feels like, you know, the, the air is wet. Christina Mantai. I come to Monster Camp next year. I want to do a Freddy Krueger prosthetic. Well, now, what we do at Monster Camp is masks. We don't necessarily do prosthetics. So that would be a different animal slightly. Uh, now, you could make a Freddy Krueger mask if you wanted to. Or wait until we do a prosthetic lab. One like him says, hi, Chad Smith. Looks like the pumpkin cast Really well. Yeah, he turned out great. I was very happy with him. Trav Garden, this is going to be great. Can't wait to see the pumpkin head mask. Okay, me neither. Why are you basing these in white instead of black? Well, because this is a white Krampus and this is a Jack Frost. So, um, sometimes I, I will base in something else. The standard is I base everything in black. Every now and then I break that rule. Um, pretty cut like there's, to me, you know, all the snowmen that I do, I always base those in white. Jeremy Diamond, I watched a video on Tom Savini. He has a studio. What do you think of his creations in school, or have you seen his class? Uh, yeah, I'm actually friends with a lot of his instructors at the Douglas Ed uh, Education uh, Center in Pennsylvania which is where the Savini School for Special Effects is. Um, Tom is awesome. When I was working with the Joe Blasco Makeup Center, every now and then, uh, that's in Orlando when I was there, uh, Tom Savini would come out and do some guest teaching stuff and visit, and that was always a treat. Um, I've been fortunate enough to meet Tom Savini several times. He's always been very nice to me, and uh, I have hired and worked with several of several graduates from his school at Dark Hour. Scott Creighton says hello. Hello, Scott Creighton. And I don't, I don't think Scott Colhart will join us today, as it is his birthday. If you guys haven't, uh, Scott Colhart is one of our uh, moderators here on uh, Filthy Studios YouTube, and uh, he does an excellent job. You might want to hop on Facebook and wish him a happy birthday if you uh, are so inclined. He is one of the many awesome moderators who was very quick to post links answering questions that you guys ask. He has, he has a whole spreadsheet, all the moderators do. They have a spreadsheet of products that I recommend. So when someone asks me a question, I can answer it and then they post a link. It's, um, we're, we have some wonderful people here. Mods and viewers. We're going to go this side of the shop for a moment. I'm going to grab a couple empty bottles. Helen, I love your scenic paintings. Will you do a full tutorial on them? I would love to see them. Uh, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Uh, that was one of my plans to do. Um, yes, I will. Yes is the answer. Very cool. Thank 
cute. He seems like a great guy and very helpful and nice about the class of people. Yeah. Alex Castle, anybody have that link now? Which link? Which link, Alex? What do you need a link for? Oh, you, you want a link to Scott Colhart's Facebook to wish him happy birthday? <laughs> So something exciting came in, finally. Uh, did you know there was a container shortage due to COVID? Um, and a while ago, I ordered plastic bottles and stuff in order to get my mask paint out there. So now uh, the bottles are in. That's, there's a bunch of Uline boxes over there. The bottles are in. So uh, we'll have mask paint out to the public very shortly. The same kind of stuff I'm using right now. And I don't know if I have a moderator on right now aside from my wife. I don't know. Stacy's on. Oh, hi, Stacy. I'm not as good at knowing who is on because. Normally I'm working and not reading comments. Misty says, yes, bottles, can't wait for the paint. He's coming. Alex says, products you recommended. I've had a list of some, but I had it on my old phone. Well, uh, normally the products come up as, as we go. It's, you know what I mean? Because I, I want to be able to explain we use it for, you know, so it's not like, boom, here's a list, because a lot of it just wouldn't make sense. Nick Henderson, Alan, I have a two-part mold, but I completely destroyed the back of the mold. What should I do? Uh, start making half masks. Um, what you can do, um, now, do you have a, a pour in there already? Do you have a, do you have a blank from it, or... Have you never poured it up before? Um, it's quite possible to put that back of that mold back together, but do it on the uh, the back of the head. That's like the part that is the least important. No one sees that, so don't worry too much about it. I'm sure that you'll be able to, you know, fill up your front half with clay and just re-sculpt the back and then remold it. You could do that too. There's there's 30 different ways to fix that problem. I got 99 solutions, but giving up ain't one. No reason why that should stop you. Your worst case scenario is now I'm making half masks. It's a little different seeing you base out in white. Just curious, what's the thought process behind the change? Oh boy, well these are mostly white masks and I'm gonna do a rub out on them. Uh, I have this one here is a rub out, no base. This one here is a rub out, no base. This one here, I'm about to base out in orange and green. And then these two, uh, I'm based, I based in white, and I'll do a rub out on them also. But they're gonna get all their classic work first with the, with the uh, brush paints and all that. So the first thing you do is you do all your latex paint work, and then you do your alcohol-based rub out. How dare you? Oh, church, you're fine. Yeah, we actually went, we started a little bit later than normal too, so we uh, we had to clean the shop. And it's storming. And it's also storming, so I was a little worried about the internet uh, not holding out for us. So far it's doing very well, and it has died down outside.
So this mask is named Gordiator, which sounds like Gladiator, which is why they picked it. And um, it also sounds a bit like Terminator. And Arnold Schwarzenegger was supposed to be in the movie The Gladiator. Um, the scene where he fights the champion, and the champion in that movie is played by Sven Ole Thornson, who was the one of the two main bad guys. He had the triple-headed axe in uh, Conan. He's one of the two main beefy bad guys, Sven Ole Thornson. And it was supposed to be Arnold Schwarzenegger in that role, but he got sick or had a scheduling conflict, and they got Sven Ole Thornson to do it. And uh, he did a great job. But he's fighting the tiger, the guy, and then tigers attack him. Yeah. That sounds like me, like giving excuses I'm late to work. I was fighting a guy, and then tigers attacked me. It was terrible. And then there were fire ninjas. That's why I'm late. Are you going to try to get all of those masks painted tonight? Yes. It's 8 o'clock. <laughs> the night is young. Welcome the night, Shadows. How do you get the latex paint mask through that airbrush? Okay, so uh, the airbrush compressor is set to 70, I think, is what this is at right now. And uh, it, it just goes through. When you mix it right and when you have the right airbrushes, it goes fine. Uh, I run this through my Pash AH all the time. A lot of people say, don't run it through your airbrush. Uh, it's, it's fine. They don't all sound like that, but some of them do. And if you, if you encounter someone that speaks like that in the wild, I don't think you should be doing that. Listen to them, because it'll make their day, because no one listens to them. Because of that voice they were blessed with, or cursed with. All right. Third degree of care, Sven was also with the running man. He and Arnold are old friends. They aren't friends? Are old friends. Yes, from, yeah, Conan, yes. Right. Yeah, they Sven Ole Thornton, he's in a lot of good stuff. That's a Trivial Pursuit name if ever there was one. Say hello, Rodney Pope. Hello, Rodney Pope. Pretzel Bob, I run silicone through that airbrush. Should be good. Oh, yeah. I run contact cement through that airbrush. This is the $10 Quick Change Harbor Freight airbrush. Why is it called Quick Change? Because I can spray orange. Three seconds later, I can spray white. No other airbrush on the planet can do that. Uh, this is my Desert Island airbrush. If I lived the whole rest of my life, I could only use one airbrush, it would be this one. It is amazing at stencils, it's amazing at basing out, and you can do a lot of simple shading techniques with it. If you really want to work and pinch the hose and get real close, then I can get lines about as fine as a Sharpie from it. But uh, you have to pinch your pressure way down to get that done. Scare 496, I'll be painting my first latex mask here this week. I'm super excited. That's Plus awesome. From Art Morris. I know who that is. Who? That's Courtney. What? That's Courtney. Oh, that's so awesome. The scariest Midwest. That's great. Hey, Courtney. Hello. Again, you out in people's real names, honey. What if what if they're running from the cops? They're being Courtney's stalked. Courtney's not running from the cops. You don't know that? I do. She looks like trouble. She's not. Shifty. That's awesome, girl. Joey Fabray, so happy to catch the live. Yeah, we live, yo. Now, normally right now I'd be sculpting on a Wednesday. This would be Wednesday sculpting lottery bingo because uh, why use one word for a name when you can use seven? Um, and, but uh, I have some mask paint catching up to do and people seem to enjoy mask painting videos as much as they enjoy uh, sculpting videos, so you're, that's what you're getting. <laughs> Here's how you do, Buckaroo. No, no, my secret. Oh, no. <laughs> John C says, my name's not really John. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> Welcome to Night Studios. Do you have a recommendation on an airbrush compressor that goes to 70 PSI? Uh, I would not use an air... Well, okay. Yes, I do. 
there's a lovely airbrush compressor from Pache. Uh, it's red and it's about 260 bucks. But it's really nice and it'll get you the PSI that you need. But I don't recommend an airbrush compressor per se. Um, right now what I would recommend is I really like my Fortress air compressor from Harbor Freight, which is a silent air compressor. It's really quiet, it's sitting in the other room, but normally I could hear a normal air compressor, but I can't hear that one now. Um, it's a great little air compressor, I really like it. And it's not that expensive, they're maybe 150, 160 if I recall. But um, yeah, nice stuff. I forget what I was saying. Did I answer the question, honey? Okay. See, I get on a tear, and I don't even know if I answered your question. Bobby says that mask is awesome. One light. I'm always unsure if you guys know who I am from the Facebook page when I'm talking about the things I'm making on here. Um, you know what? I, I guarantee you that I don't. I uh, Because people have a regular name, they have a YouTube name, and sometimes they have a haunted house character name, and I might know one of them. Um, but the, when do I meet the most haunted house people? I meet them at trade shows. When am I the most in deficit of brain power to tri attribute to knowing and remembering someone's name and face and all that stuff? It's at trade shows when I have zero sleep and I'm meeting uh, hundreds of people at, at that time. And I'm not meeting hundreds of people at that time because I think I'm important or anything. I'm just meeting hundreds of people because I'm working in a booth and everybody kind of comes by the booth. Um, I also happen to have the, the YouTube channel, so I, I meet a lot of people through that. Um, I am not the best with names and faces. Uh, I try, but I'm not the best at it. So um, I'm not offended if someone gives me a hint as to who they are, especially if on here they have a name like, you know, Razor Blade Finger Arkansas. And it's like, well, good for you, Razor Blade Finger Arkansas. No, it's me, Jimmy, from wherever. Okay. But I'm not going to remember that right off the bat. How are you supposed to? Yeah, yeah. I, I like, I, and then, you know, you might tell me once, but that doesn't mean they're linked in my mind because even when you tell me now or when Shannon tells me, I'm painting a mask right now. And this is, this is where most of my brain power is going. One of the reasons why I'm good at the things that I'm good at is because I don't think about anything else. Like, I don't waste time thinking about what I'm going to eat that day or what clothes I'm going to wear. Um, none, none of those decisions affect me because I'm thinking about haunted house stuff. Um, down to and including, um, I, I'm getting better about, you know, anniversaries and, and birthdays and that I'm getting better um, but you know that that's not what my brain is wired for my brain is wired to tell you the formula for latex mask paint and the ratios of 20 different kinds of silicone I can do that that's what my brain is wired to do I can tell you what kind of glue to use on whatever project you want but that my brain isn't wired in a way where I easily remember names and where I talk to people, even movies, like every movie like runs together in my head. Um, I, can, I can clearly remember parts in Die Hard where um, Princess Bride quotes show up. They don't, but if my brain thinks about it, I'll remember it. That's the problem. So, yes. And unless it pertains to me, or unless I'm learning something, I don't normally remember stuff. I, I hate to say that. I don't mean to sound rude. That's not how I'm wired. If the principal were here, he would say, Mrs. Gump, your children are different. Yes, Mrs. Gump is created with my social media name, because you are maybe last. Yeah, yeah, a lot. Werewolf number seven. <laughs> my full name is Michael James Kirby from Australia. My real name is not my, my first name is not, I'm really my friend. I'm not really a line. <laughs> yeah, see, I don't, I don't know. I don't know that. I, I assume you're a line, you know. Um, what's, there, there's, there's someone named Tutworks. 
And for the longest time, um, I just assume in my head, sitting in front of their laptop is a little King Tut watching, you know, watching the videos because their name is Tutworks. And that's all I know, it's like King Tut. And then I found out it's a girl. So now every time that they show up, I'm like, oh, it's a Noxana Moon sitting in front of her laptop watching the videos. Okay, and let's do this stem up here green also. We're going to brown up that green. It's not going to stay that bright. Nico says, just don't forget the important dates involving the white. Uh, I'm getting better. <laughs> Robert White says, you know mine. It's no, it's no uh, treat being married to me, guys. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I have, there, there, are, there are good things. You know, I'll make you stuff. Um, but, uh. Um, I'll make you stuff, but, you know, some things I, uh, I'm not good at. Scarecrow 96, I kid you not, I was in the midst of researching ways to paint latex, and boom, y'all are here. Might have to pick some brains. Here we are. Come on. Warmonger says, Albert Einstein wore a brown suit every day, so he wouldn't waste brain power on deciding what to wear. That is called decision fatigue. That is also why... Boy, who's the guy with the glasses, Apple computers? Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs. That's why he wore the same thing all the time. He did. You, your brain only has the capacity to make so many decisions in a day. Why waste it on what you're going to wear? Why, why think hard about that? Um, often I will grab a t-shirt out of the drawer while it's still dark. And uh, I grab them by softness. Oh, it's a good soft shirt. I'll wear that one. You know, and this, I just, I don't have shirts in that drawer I don't want to wear. Right? Right. Says the sculpt turned out awesome, Alan. Is he mine? Yes. Yes. My that's, wife says yes. Yes, this is Lisa's. <laughs> uh, that's also stuff I don't keep track of. My wife keeps track of that. But yes, this is for you. She I looked over. She went. Yes. Yes. This is, Lisa. Uh, this is the first one out of the mold. Ezekiel pumpkin salad looks great. Pumpkin salad. <laughs> That's an alternate name, I guess, yeah. So probably the color I use the least is yellow. We're going to use a little yellow. Hi, I'm Mr. Haunt, middle name, and... <laughs> Haunt what? Middle name, and... Do a little yellow inside of the mouth. And then I gotta grab another bottle. Rodney Pope, since it's been raining all day. Sure I has. I wanted to see the skeleton together. I know my ceilings aren't 12 foot, but I tried anyway. <laughs> Zach! Zach Weisman, that's why I own 30 of the exact same v neck shirt. Yeah. Well, he says my wife was just giving me that white look. <laughs> Here for buy the buy. It's totally chill if you say Courtney. I know my username doesn't roll off the tongue. Well, also I may have the yeah, used oil paint. Okay, let's try again. Also, may I ask, have you used oil paint with rubber cement to paint masks? I have. Yes, I have. Uh, and it works. It, it's very translucent, so you have to add a lot of oil paint. And the more oil paint you add, the longer it takes to dry, because oil paint takes a long time to dry. So if you don't add a lot of oil paint, then it's a very translucent paint. Um, and that's great for subtlety, and that's great for realism. Um, I paint normally for low light conditions, so I don't like it. Also, you can't store it for any length of time. If you mix up a jar of um, rubber cement paint to paint masks with, and you come back to it three days later, it's dry, it's cured. Uh, it's not usable, so you, it, it's not, that's why no one sells it, because it is, you can't store it. It's, it's not a long-term thing. Uh, that's why I like this, because it, these will keep, you know, I've kept latex mask paint like this for three years in these bottles. Um, 
and I don't even like keep tips on them. What you saw me do when I got the yellow, I barely ever used the yellow, so there was a lot dry in the tip. I pulled it out with a pin, it's good to go. Shake, yes, shake it. Like a Polaroid picture. They don't. They don't. Uh, and I have just come to the understanding that um, I'm paying two bucks a bottle when I buy them because I buy boxes of these and I just will throw this airbrush away. I, I you know, uh, I just don't need it. Um, I save the hoses because I use those for projects sometimes. Um, like this one I've had so long, it's just, it's straight. You know, these, these hoses are so coiled when you get them. Um, but yeah, uh, I just, you know, 10 bucks for five bottles, that's not a bad price. Michael, Alan, do you find that you are more creative during the night or day? For me, I can only sculpt at night for some reason. I've done it during the day, the sculptures are less creative. No, uh, I'm, it's, when this becomes your everyday work and it's your job, you have to have what I call creativity on tap. You can't have, and I'm not saying it's an excuse, so forgive me, this is language that I formulated long before this conversation, so it doesn't mean that I'm aiming this sentence at you. You don't have the option or the excuse to say, oh, I'm just not creative during the daytime. You have to get creative during the daytime. Um, you have to get creative when you've only had two hours of sleep. Um, it doesn't matter, I mean, all the problems still happen, and uh, all of the art needs to be made, all the deadlines need to be met. So, um, no, not anymore. Again, me with the long answers. Hey, wife, would you tell a story? Uh, yes. It's, it's a quick story time from the wife. Uh, and my wife is going to tell a story that some of you might have heard before. <laughs> about when I was airbrushing people at Screen's Halloween Park and she worked the trail well, down below. All right, do this. <laughs> Greetings, comrades. Uh, this is true. Uh, when Alan and I worked at Screen's Halloween Park, I was at the very bottom of the hill. If you've ever been there, then you know where I'm talking about. I was at the bottom of the hill because I helped work the Trail of Terror. And Alan, being the director, was at the top of the hill because he did the... Uh, the airbrushing costume, he was director of the, of the show, so he was there. And when we drove in on Friday afternoons, you know, I'd give him a kiss and I'd say, okay, I love you, see you Sunday, because truly I'm not going to see you any other time. I'm going to be deep in the show, I was acting, I was managing, he was all over the park, so I won't see him. Uh, so he would airbrush the actors, and if there was an actor that was coming to my show, he would airbrush a note on the actor, usually on his back or his chest. Uh, maybe on the back of his head if he's bald. And I have a lot of bald actors. And uh, so it would be something very sweet, like love you wife, or see a Sunday wife, or can we have chicken and dumplings for dinner Sunday night? <laughs> and he would airbrush it on the actor, and the actor would come down and say, Mrs. Hops, I have a message for you. And he'd just pull up the back of his shirt, and that was my message. So that's how Alan, because the phones didn't work. We were so far down the hill that uh, phones didn't work. They didn't get a signal. So he couldn't text me a message, he couldn't call me, but he could send an actor down there with an airbrush message on the back of his, uh, on, on his back that said, you know, I love you, wife. Uh, I, can we have chicken and nuts for dinner? This is really true. Uh, also, one of my actors, uh, uh, Bob Floyd, who I was actually ended up being one of the, uh, one of our partners who helped with the trail, who was one of the actual partners. Uh, had a grave digger character, and he was uh, a greeter with me, and so he would go up to the top of the hill and get his makeup put on, and he always had the latex build up to look very hot and rough, and uh, Alan would always do something special with Bob. He would always put something new on Bob. And Bob has this beautiful blonde hair, he looks like a Jedi, and, and so you had, to, you, know, you had to rough Bob up, you had to make him look rough. And uh, so one night, Alan was 
doing the airbrush and he was doing the latex buildup. And like many haunts, where he was actually doing all the airbrush was a picnic table outside, very primitive. And in the late summer, early fall of when the show was open, there were still a lot of insects out there, plenty of bugs. And there was a big camel cricket that just crawled up on the table. And Alan just grabbed him and stuck him in the latex and then put the live camel cricket on Bob's face. And uh, then spray painted around it and, and then sent Bob on his way with a live camel cricket stuck in his face. And it was horrible and yet hilarious. I was, uh, I was horrified and again, I couldn't stop laughing at it. And so I tried not to look at him when we had people who were performing because I got tickled because I just crawled this camel cricket, poor thing, was trying to, to, uh, was trying to get away. So that's kind of gross. But amusing all the same. And if you, you, know, you guys do move on, so you know that the, the gross factor it's, it's to the point where it's kind of tough to, to gross people out. But we uh, we did a, our first black and white show at the trail, and I think that's in 2012, 2010. And we painted everything this uh, gray, because it's all grayscale. And at some point, somebody painted uh, a huge praying mantis gray. Just kept painting the praying mantis on the wall. I just kept it. Just spray the poor paint praying mantis flat gray. Terrible. And what's that? Oh, gross. What? Oh, okay. And uh, this praying mantis survived, not only survived the paint of the build day, but he ended up traveling all over the show. What did we name it? What's his name? Leonard. Leonard. Leonard the Gray Praying Mantis. And so this flat mat Gray Praying Mantis, uh, we say, you know, oh, we have confirmed Leonard sighting tonight in the dungeon. We have confirmed Leonard sighting tonight in the uh, in the uh, pirate ship and such. And that Praying Mantis survived the entire season, spray painted flat black and, uh, I'm sorry, flat gray. <laughs> Poor guy. But he was, he was pretty sure. So there's some tales for you from... Uh, no one painted the praying mantis maliciously. No, no, it was, you didn't It was know, just that we had a paint sprayer and we would just spray the whole wall. There you were. And he was on the fence. And we didn't know he was on the fence until he was uh, post-sprayed. Who said that? Michael says, love you, no nonsense attitude. Great house, Yes. What the hell is a camel cricket? It's horrible. They're wonderful. They're huge and terrible. Camel crickets are my second favorite kind of cricket. My first favorite kind of cricket is a mole cricket. And if you don't know what both of those are, look them up. Wonderfully horrified. Poor Mongra. Notice today that Walmart has $25 pipe with skeletons and $3 full size skulls. The paint job is a little hack, but the skulls are pretty good. Yeah, that's how that goes. Scarecore says these stories are so strangely nostalgic because I relate in such a way. I can't tell you how many times I've sprayed over spiders in their webs while I'm stressing. Yeah, it just happens. It was a tough prank, man. I feel bad every time. Yeah, Leonard, Leonard kicked butt, man. I take a camel cricket over a mole cricket any day. Did the cricket live to the end of the night? Uh, no. I don't think but so. the cricket escaped, actually. Yeah, the cricket uh, escaped. So gross. Hey. 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 Hey.
Dad, hi Chad, fly boy. Zach says, that's one thing I don't miss about Texas. I was just reminiscing, it was seven years ago that I went out there to help open dark out. Yeah. Cold crickets came out of a kid's head on Halloween 3. Have you ever heard of HH66 and Eason? No, I have not. And this one was painted with the brush, so uh, it's just not as even as with an airbrush, so I am trying to airbrush it. <laughs> great house mom, great quote. If your makeup escapes, just let it go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but don't chase down any makeup that runs off your face. Care for. There's been full families of possums that have lived in arts. Definitely makes some interesting late night working. Yeah, we, we, one day Shannon will tell you the story of the possum that was removed from uh, Trail of Terror when we were open. Terrible. Kirk Mattia likes the pumpkin mask a lot. Thanks, man. You see, it's twice as sticky as HH33 adhesive. That makes this Jones! Jones! Bones Jones! Jonesy! That's our cat. Jones came into the shop to say hey. Jonesy is an orange tabby who is named after the cat from Aliens. It was also an orange tabby. See, isn't that just like more even? It's more evenly white, which is, I think, good. All right, so this stuff is going to take a little bit to dry. I'm going to put these in the other room where I have fans set up. And I'm going to get them drying. Kicks on all fans. Buddy Geeks, I intend on doing large animatronic possums on my trail. Awesome. That's, you know what, that's a very good plan because uh, fur is very forgiving and possums have so much fur on them that uh, it's pretty, pretty nice to be able to do a possum and you don't have to worry a lot about uh, things showing or joints and things because the fur is just going to cover all that up. I think that one is dry. <laughs> Tell us a story, Jeff. A story of how he was found on a rainy night. I'm not going to tell you a story, but he'll tell you the news, man. Uh, he is a very vocal cat. He comes in and yells, hey, you know, all the time. Very beastie. A metal shot my friend used to have had two armored spiders. Metal dust would land on them. If you can't climb it, they would rust into iron stalagmites. They clicked it all as they were it. John C. says it'll be the first possum that makes other people play dead. Right. Versus evil. Tucker and Dale versus evil. Okay. Well, to do that, you'll have to see my wife. Bones Jones. 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 That there's his butthole. Okay. <laughs> now we can move on. Cats have an innate sense of someone's looking at me. Here's my butt. <laughs> Jonesy's a loud kitty, says John Shipley. You are correct. Courtney, I'm giving him heavens for you. Switches to Jonesy. <laughs> oh, Jones.
Okay, I should have over here. I just got on. When I said that I have a lot of those airbrushes, uh, like all of these are those bottles. Like this is all those bottles. There's more down here. There's more right here. There's more up here. Honestly, for two dollars, it is cheaper for me to buy new ones than it is to spend time cleaning them out. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but uh, it's true. But now I'm looking for one that has rub out in it. And I think this is the one I need with rub out. If my time is worth a certain amount per hour, okay, then um, at some point it is cheaper for me to buy something than it is for me to repair or make or get another one. Do you have a favorite technique for applying paint? Um, yes, my favorite technique for applying paint is actually dry brushing. Haven't really done any of that yet here. But uh, that's my favorite. Limelight says our taggy kerchief mix is very local as well. It may be a taggy thing. It may be. Limelight, we have a, another taggy, and uh, that's Royal. He is also very loud. So maybe it is. Harry Beastie, he stopped trying to put them out of their misery when Spider Spike went through the sole of his foot. Oh, Lord. Yeah, I'll do it. Scott Colhard, happy birthday! Happy birthday, Scott! Happy birthday, Scott! I wish Scott a happy birthday. Okay. So I was trying to find my bottle of rub out. I've got the Createx Bloodlines paint that I use on my resin eyes. Will it work on the latex you're going to use as well? Yes. Createx, the Tex, T-E-X in Createx is for latex. So there's latex in it. It has a latex mix already. Steve Haynes, if you had a 12-foot skeleton, what would you do with it? I have one on the way. And I'm going to turn it into a skeleton of a Cyclops. So it's going to be a Cyclops in scale with the one from the Sinbad movie. So it'll be a Cyclops skeleton for my Mythical Monster Museum that I have. Uh, I'm even going to do the hoof legs and hairy legs on it, so I think that'll be a lot of fun. Dry brushing goes so well for many paint jobs on various materials. Without doubt, it is my favorite. It's also, I think, the best way to paint something that's going to be seen in low light conditions. It really that's makes things says, pop. Dry brushing is my favorite type of painting too. <laughs> that is why we're homies. Then in yard hall, enjoy the 12 foot skeleton club also. Why wouldn't you? Okay, I have my rub out. Along with my rub out, in order to do this paint job, I'm going to need a few paper towels and I'm going to need an alcohol based spray. Larry Hughes says, Wow, sounds badass. But what should we expect from now? Rodney Cope, I want to do something different with my 12 foot skeleton. Okay, buy two and make a 12 foot Siamese skeleton. Gross. I can't even find a 12-foot skeleton. You guys are looking. Uh, if I could get two, then I would make an Etten, an E-T-T-I-N, which is a D&D creature which has two heads. And they're, you know, 12 to 15 feet tall. There's a chance this is just your wife. See, Rainy Peaks work yesterday. It's a client that did a skeleton army in the front yard with 10 of those 12-foot skeletons. Really? It is so great. That's awesome. Yeah. Third degree of terror, Sinbad style, Cyclops, Skeleton, you rock, my friend. And yeah, my skeleton is due to arrive next week. Heck yeah. All right, so this is alcohol-based ink. Sparrow's Cave. Jumping the gun. I don't do this now. I got painting to do first. If I had a 12-foot skeleton, I'd make it into a 12-foot Jason Voorhees just because it would be scary and intimidating. That would be awesome. What do those skeletons cost? About three hundred dollars. Have them play patty cake. We've been using our skelly boy to promote the family-friendly haunt nights. 
cool. So says I have two of the twelve foot skeletons in storage awaiting twenty twenty-two. You know what? I think what I, I would love to do with them is make a nice archway out of them. You know, two skeletons kind of reaching over, you know, and, and both of their hands are kind of connected. Make a nice archway out of it. They they you know painted, built into a set, they they would look phenomenal. Looking forward to seeing all the 12 foot skeleton creations, and yes, I'm waiting for mine too, says Steve Baines. Heck yeah. Funny folks, I think it's funny how there are people on some of the Facebook groups hating on the 12 foot skeleton. Why? I call those people Egypts. That's why now they get delivered because they are selling out of them at most times. Yeah, I ordered mine online over a month ago, and uh, I just got a notification that it shipped. So, I almost messed up my order of operations. I wanted to jump to the rub out because it's fun, and I think of that as the base, but I'm not ready for that yet. What I need to do is I need to do all the painting that is latex paint first. Then I do the rub out. You do your latex painting first because the alcohol solution will not rub off the latex paint. Cool. Like, so like King Kong. There are so many memes about them, and it's cracking me up. The Haven't seen them. Alan, how would you suggest painting those puppet skeletons? We ordered two, and I plan on adding some detail to it. If you just a simple paint job, I actually, surprise, I have a video for that where I'm painting an eight foot skeleton that I got uh, back when. Um, there were what they called Frankenbuckies. They were eight foot resin skeletons. They weigh 300 pounds, man, they're ridiculous. But I have a video of me uh, distressing one of those and I'm using Woodland Scenic um, spray paint. The color is, boy, I didn't sleep a lot last night because I was editing a video. Uh, glossy Wood Tone. Woodland Scenic's Glossy Wood Tone is the color that I use. My plan to approach them leaning over the walkway, looking down on people walking directly over. Yeah. Ezekiel, about an 18, uh, 18 inch skull the other day. I think I can make the rest of it. PVC. I saw that. I saw you do that. Uh, PVC and some kind of a, like a Loctite type foam where you can do a little bit of sculpting is a good way to go. Uh, also, um, you know, uh, you can do a lot of like the bone nub sculpting with balls of tin foil and Bondo. Get good with Bondo and you can do a lot of cool skeleton stuff with that. Michael says, hey Alan, I know I mentioned Dead by Daylight a lot, but the game just released a new killer called The Blight. It's a non-licensed killer. I'm not saying you should do it, but you should do it. <laughs> oh, okay. Hey, I'm Tenebration. Jerry Collins. Chad Flyboy, I have the Createx Bloodline paint I use on my resin eyes. Will it be okay with the latex we will be using? Yes, yeah. Yeah. What do you do to weatherproof your corpsing? Um, so, I do plastic corpsing. It's plastic, it's weatherproof. That's why I do it. Um, that's why I don't like monster mud. It's too heavy and it's not waterproof. So that's why I showed some alternatives in the uh, videos I did today. Are the 12 footers that poseable? Uh, no, they're not that poseable. They're somewhat poseable. Elena, I hope I'm saying this right, and I apologize if I'm not. Are you talking? Why is this in my recommendations? But I'm glad it is. Welcome aboard. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, do you like art? Do you like spooky stuff? Uh, right now, we're painting up some latex masks. Um, these are going out to some customers who have ordered latex masks from me. Uh, that is what we do at Still Beast Studios. We make uh, masks, costumes, and 
uh, all kinds of stuff for the haunted house industry and Halloween and haunted house enthusiasts, I guess. Um, yeah. So, yeah, welcome. Thanks for hanging out with us. Bonnie Geek says, everything is posable with enough power tools. That's right. Enough, enough power tools, rebar, and bondo. You can pose anything. Chad Flyboy says, next weekend can't come fast enough. Yeah, is that next weekend at Monster Camp? Yep. Awesome. Love the alternative to Monster Mud. I can definitely see myself knocking something up with that stuff, says Ezekiel. And I'm going to be honest with you. The underlayment foam, the polyethylene foam, I didn't really do it justice in that video. I built two of those in a day. I built two of those in about four hours. So um, I didn't spend a lot of time on it. Uh, but I have some more of that polyethylene foam sheeting coming up uh, in other videos. So expect to see a little more of that where I really go into detail with it because it's really good stuff. I notice you don't date or sign your masks like dog posts, distortions, etc. Why is that? I always thought it was egotistical. Um, but also to me, art has always kind of been disposable. I only call it art now and I think about it art now because it's been drilled into me, but um, I'm a haunted house guy, number one. That's like, if you ask me what I am, I'm a haunted house guy. And then, then I say I'm a costumer and a mask maker and all that. The haunted house is number one. So really, um, it's your tools. This is a tool. It's a hammer. Why would I sign a hammer that I made? Why would I sign a wrench that I made? Um, I, I, I have not seen a value in it previously. Um, I get a lot of people requesting me to do it now, and um, so I do. But, yeah, it's still a little weird in all honesty. I don't know. I don't know why they do it. Ezekiel says, I've got about nine bags of that poly sheeting free a few weeks ago. Wondering what I can do with finally video for sure. So much. So much. It's a monster skin for almost anything. Uh, it's really good stuff. Steve Haynes, can't wait to see the work for a monster camp, and yes, I'm still jealous even after two times. Yeah, Steve has gone to monster camp two times. Michael, I don't sign my statues either for the exact same reason. Yeah, it seems a little weird. Nicholas Pinter, hey, I want to love the jack o' lantern. Uh, Tots Halloween three pumpkins myself. Correct. Nicholas Pinter, the two and the Wolfman, the werewolf costume, werewolf mask. Yeah. A lot of geeks. I can see the underlayment foam working great for making foam trees. Uh, it, it, it's great for a lot of stuff. Now, it's not UV stable unless you paint it. Uh, by itself, the uh, sun will break it down, so uh, just don't leave it out in the sun, you know, unless it's painted. Once you paint it, it's fine. Chad Smith says, when I think about it, I sculpted the name of my business. Okay. Yelena says, and yeah, it's probably in my recommendations because I'm an artist and I'm from Serbia, so it's okay if you can't pronounce my name. Thank you. Very gracious. Hope I said it with person. I bet Serbia is beautiful. She's a she's an artist, and that's probably why. Yeah. Yeah. If you look at art stuff, that's probably why we. Uh, normally tonight I would be sculpting, but I have kind of a backlog of masks, so we are going to paint a mask that we call the Leech Lord. Right there's the eyes. See the eyes up in there? But when the teeth are down, you can barely see the eyes, but you can see out really well. That's the Leech Lord. We're painting it. This is called War Piggin. This was not sculpted by me. This was sculpted by my friend, Al Driver. Uh, I was here at the time when he was sculpting it, and I may have uh, taken the wire to it a couple times. Um, and this, is, this will be Jack Frost. I based him out earlier. And there's two other masks in the other room that we based out that we'll be working on today, too. What is, what is going to take a long time today, I think, is actually going to be drying because it's so wet outside. It's raining, and uh, this does not want to dry in high humidity. Larry Hughes, it's not for value in my opinion. I just think it's to have the creator and the beast sign it 
Sorry, I don't need to make it weird. No, 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 I, I get it. Come on, Forrest. Steve Haynes replaced all my masks with elastic straps, and yes, I did a much better job than I did on yours. That's right. You did do a minor boogering. Buddy Geese, is that going to be a UV variant leech lord? Uh, this one, no. This one is a single leech lord, and it will be sander. Uh, the UV variant leech lords, I'm pouring up the last one, I think, right now. And... Uh, then I'll batch paint all of them at the same time. And I'll do that live too. What paint stands up to you be? Uh, well, okay, so we're talking about two different kinds of UV. I just want to make that clear. Uh, earlier I was talking about the polyethylene sheeting. Um, just as long as you're covering it from the sun, uh, it's not heat that's the problem. It's actually the UV light will break down the polyethylene foam. Uh, you know how pool noodles, if they're left out for too long, will start flaking apart, that's the sun. But if you give them a coating of just latex house paint, one or two coats, or even better, something like a leak seal, which is a nice thick coating spray on, then uh, that works really well to protect them from UV. Even though the dark hour is not open this Halloween season, are you doing any work there now? Uh, most of my work is at home, but I'm making a lot of things that I can use at dark hour. So what I'm working on, you know, like you see me doing the hammerhead shark mask and the megalodon mask, all of that is actually dark hour work that uh, as soon as we're good to go, I'll bring some dark hour latex home and just start pouring up a bunch of the stuff that I already made and then voila, we're in business. Yeah, and uh, this Halloween we're doing some backstage tours and stuff at dark hour. So I'll be doing that. We won't be open for regular business, but we'll be doing some backstage tours. Warmonger says an Alex original is worth way more something. I don't know about that. But also, you know what, though? Um, my work is so documented through YouTube and through Facebook and stuff, it's very easy to tell if a mask is mine or not. And uh, I kind of have a sculpting style that I think is fairly easy to recognize also. Now, I'm trying to... Uh, I get better, <laughs> so I have, you know, a little more variance to my looks. Buddy Geek says, let me know and I'll try to be on for the painting of the UV. I will. When I know it's coming up, I'll give you a heads up. Stephen Haynes, I'm sure he has a video <coughs> of strapping a mask. Oh, I have plenty. But they're mostly, it's mostly hidden in live videos. Fun life. Does anybody have any idea, prop ideas that would be cool to practice sculpting foam on? I've made a mask of foam clay and Cthulhu-based plastic dagger, and one of my friends said a magic tone. Um, what I would do is I would probably just do some nice decor panels, like a two-foot by four-foot panel, um, and do, like you mentioned Cthulhu, you know, do like a, like Cthulhu was carved in it, like a bas-relief, um, and you can do that out of foam nice and easy. Good night, Scott Creighton. Just pick some nice uh, bas-relief sculptures or even uh, drawings and uh, recreate those drawings in the, uh, the foam. And when you say foam sculpting, do you mean um, like EPS, like white styrofoam, or do you mean uh, like Loctite spray foam? But my answer stands for both. Here, Cora, got a weird project. Is there any earthly way to make a stuffed animal snake look like a decent prop? I'm so lost on what to do with them that Vinny must think I'm a here for Um, you have the stuffed animal already, and you want to make it look better. Is, is that correct? Or is that something that you're going to get as a stuffed animal? How do I seal paper mache head? Seal it from what? Like I would, I would never put paper mache outside. But uh, you have some options. I mean, you can. Um, what I have done with some 
things that needed to be a little more rugged was I used clear silicone caulk on the outside, the crystal clear silicone caulk. The problem is it might yellow over time. You have to be careful of that. Or five minute epoxy. Use five minute epoxy, mix that up, put it over your paper mache. That's a great sealer. Thank you for saying that Serbia is beautiful. Sorry if I messed up my English. I'm tired. It's boring. Uh, no problem. No problem at all. Um, the, I think that every place we are, every place people live, and places where even people don't live, they're all beautiful in their own way. You know, uh, how can you even, how can you look at Antarctica and not say, wow, that is beautiful. And then at the same time, go look at the Sonora Desert. It's beautiful. You know, uh, the world's a beautiful place. And then people get in it, and that causes problems. But, um, yeah, it's uh, everything that I've seen, uh, it, it's a beautiful country. I hate to ask, but which video is it that you painted the teeth of the Minotaur? Well, uh, Moratar is the name of the video. Moratar. It's only a few nights ago, really. Teeth yeah. Moratar. Courtney says, yes, they're stuffed animal snakes on a steel rod jumping out of the box. It was one of the animatronics he made this season. What I would probably do is uh, I would take, again, something like clear silicone caulking and put all over the outside, because then you're going to give it a similar texture to what a snake might have, as opposed to looking like velour or plush. Um, yeah. I think that's where you're going to need to be, is just changing that skin out uh, by putting things on it. Um, you, might, you might do latex, because it'll be easier to paint. So maybe uh, just give them a, a latex rub down, and then paint them. And you can paint them pretty easy by uh, latex them, let that dry, paint them black with latex paint, let that dry, and then put a... Um, fishnet stocking over them and then paint them like a nice bright green with you know like yellow bellies or whatever and then pull that uh, fishnet stocking off and you'll have all your scale pattern there because you didn't paint the black where the stockings were. my silicone caulking with uh, odorless mineral spirits now. It used to be that odorless mineral spirits did not work, uh, but now odorless mineral spirits works to thin it out, um, and that's just a safer bet, I think, than lighter fluid, which would probably work because like most lighter fluid is basically naphtha. I did. I did. Fishnet, uh, lupa net. Uh, lupa netting is more like tool. Very similar. All of this guy is airbrush after, so I can do my rub out on him, but that's going to be a blue rub out. Uh, he is going to get a little bit of work under his eyes. And this looks terrible right now, like, but right now is not the final. Right now is not how it's viewed. Uh, this looks really rough until it's in its final form. Almost looks like I'm doing a clown. 
If you know me, you know that I'm not. Okay, now that has to dry. That's where we're at now. Looks like a really messed up version of the Joker without green hair. All right, let's grab this guy. Let us prep a blue ink rub out. Just have to grab some out like alcohol. alcohol. Spirits is just a little less caustic, and uh, in the past three years, the formula has changed either in the silicone caulk or in the odorless mineral spirits to where it now works. It didn't do the work to thin it. Now it does. Good night, Captain Ray. Javier Alfaro says, Hello, thank you for being an inspiration for me. I am starting SFX. Awesome. That's very cool. If you can, keep us updated on your work and show it to us on um, the Creepers page. I would love to see some of the stuff that you're doing. In Australia, my nap is called Show Light. Okay. Do you have any of the sculpting tools made up, or do you make them as people order? I'd like to buy some to use at Monster Camp 6 if possible. Uh, yeah, we keep some on hand. This is probably a stupid question, but when you do a scar, what colors are mostly used except red? Um, there, well, it depends on the kind of scar. I'm going to look at a visual reference, and then I'm going to um, work according to that visual reference. So, a little hard to tell you, but probably... Um, a nice magenta, a mauve, uh, probably some purple. Uh, there might even be a little bit of like olive green around it. It depends on the scar itself. Is there a place that sells different molds? Uh, normally you have to make your own molds. The only molds that are really for sale most of the time are molds for making fake eyes, molds for uh, like doll parts that are meant to be press molds. Um, and there's also some silicone molds that are great for chocolate and you can use them for some resin things. But normally you have to make your own mold. That's the hard part. That's the part that has the biggest learning gap. So a lot of folks don't sell those. Alan, which do you prefer, vampires or werewolves? Or favorite new universal classic uh, Wolfman, uh, 100%. Werewolves are the bomb. Yes, very much werewolf fan. Much more than vampires. I like vampires, but not as much as I like werewolves. What kind of zombie juice are you drinking now? Uh, what I'm drinking is actually just uh, Coke Zero. I'm pretty boring when it comes to beverages. Okay, let's see if this bottle that I have tried to resurrect is going to work. Like a champ. 
for a moment. Yes, yes, we're in business. But now that has blue ink all over it. I don't want to touch that mask until. Midwest Bill and Z says is that John Gobblecon. Uh, that is that's going to be Jack Frost. But that's a great name. Planning on building a one-to-one -one Wolfman in the next few weeks. How tall would you suggest? I would say six foot. Six foot, maybe six two. I wouldn't go crazy tall. If you're talking about a werewolf, which is more of a crinos form with a snout, that's when I would get into the seven, eight foot tall. But not with a wolf man, I would just give him a little bit of extra beef. Uh, spray paint lid. Yeah. We need way more werewolf movies dark. Yeah. Yeah. Rag with alcohol. Alcohol based ink. It's going to look crazy when I do this. Chad Smith, I'm a little excited. I was missing a creature from the Black Lagoon in my Universal Monsters DVD collection. The wife picked it up at Walmart today. Awesome. Yeah, this time of year, they do really good about uh, having those types of movies in. Uh, the classics. He says, man, I really want to get better with those Harbor Prey airbrushes. I just got so spoiled by that Pache trigger. But now, look at how the detail pops in that. In that, uh, in that. Very important on Pache. Um, yeah, just get one in practice, you know. Um, I... I prefer these just for their ease of use. Now, do they go a little nutty sometimes? Yeah, I mean, sometimes they're, but that's airbrushes. A pair of glasses in his past as the goblin and asked for the strangers. A little bit, yes, I can see that. Has a very classic goblin look to it. I'd build a 12 foot grave digger if I got one of those skeletons. Elena asks, how long does it take you to sculpt and paint a mask usually? Okay, so uh, I've done the math before, and to get a mask finished, like start to finish, a half mask, you're looking at about 16 hours. That is six to eight hours of sculpting, and then you have a mold making process, and you clean out the mold, and then you pour it up, and then you pull it, trim it, uh, and paint it. Alan, do you soak your rag in alcohol and bring it out prior to wipe it off, or is it just with dry rag? Uh, it has alcohol on it, yes. And wow. I just I just spray it. Okay. Lisa says that is gorgeous. Justin Pfeiffer. Wow, busy night. 131 are watching. How's it going? The goblin thing looks awesome. Uh, this is going to be Jack Frost. This is going to be Jack Frost. It's one of my favorites to do. And I, I'll admit, I'm playing a little bit with the paint on this one. Uh, Jack Frost isn't one that I've done so many times. It's like, no, it's this way. Boom, boom, boom is a formula. And sometimes I play a little fast and loose with Jack Frost. So, uh, but I don't mind each one looking a little bit different, you know? Nicholas Spencer says that mask would make for a great Spider-Man uh, uh, It's a little, uh, so, so there are some universal features in evil characters. As soon as you get real hard, angular cheekbones, long pointy chin, pointy nose, pointy ears, you're headed towards, like, it's a universal, not universal monsters, but one of the universal looks of monsters. Angular is scary, and it's hard to get more angular cheekbones, a more angular chin than you have on the Green Goblin. And why is he drawn that way? He's drawn that way because they have to draw him hundreds of times, and they're giving economy. They're giving, you know, a, economy to it. We want him to be evil. We want him to be quintessentially evil. So let's let's do as little as we possibly can to make him uh, express that evil and scariness. Crappy UK. Good evening, guys. Hope you're well. With my new wireless headphones tonight. Up down. Hooray. Alan, that means I can't set off your Alexa. Alan, do you own, operate your own pro haunted house, or have you ever? 
I operate, I run Dark Hour Haunted House in Plano, Texas. I've been in the haunted house. My dogs are wrestling and they've knocked over the iPod. I've been in the haunted house industry for 35 years. Uh, and this will be a very weird season. It's my 35th season. Uh, I've owned a haunted house for, boy, I owned my first haunted house when I was 16. And uh, more recently, I owned one for about 12 years. So, yes. And now I've moved you too close, you can't see what I'm doing. Absolutely adore that mask. It's awesome. That was cool. <laughs> 1980 says, sorry, I put the goblin in people's head. No, no, that happens. I mean, that's that's what a lot of sculpts look like that. Um, okay. If it has jowls, if people say it looks like Jeepers Creepers, if it has uh, this type of anatomy, then people say that, you know, it looks like the Green Goblin. Yeah, uh, it's, it's hard to get away from it. It's just, that's just how it is. Paul Bennett says it looks like he had his father. A little, I, I'll give you that. Jim Hallwood says, wow, awesome, I gotta look up your haunt when I'm in Texas. Yeah, uh, even if we're not open, let me know and uh, I'll show you around. Hey, Corey Wong says hello. Hello. All right, so that, the ink is done. And we can uh, work on him later. I'm going to set him off to the side. But you see how much that ink work just popped the detail? And that's why I based it out in white. I knew I was going to get all the detail that I need, not from a black base coat with white dry brushing, but with an antiquing method with the ink. And now we're going to do it again, but we're going to do it with the... Uh, treatment that we give them every couple of months for ticks um, and tick it's ticks and fleas and they take it it's every like three months isn't it it's every, uh, every month. yeah but also you know it's every month apparently uh, apparently I don't give it to them enough uh, and, for the cats, yeah. and then and we do the cats and then uh, we also you know you sit down you pet them and you look you just check them for for buggos and you evict them Courtney says, would it be a big no-no during the haunt to touch up a latex mask with makeup if you're in a pinch before opening? I wouldn't do it necessarily because uh, there might be things in the makeup that is fine for human skin that might eat latex. Uh, Vaseline, perfectly fine for human skin. It'll eat latex um, over a little bit of time like it's acid. So you have to be careful. I, I wouldn't use makeup on a mask. You can use like rubber mask grease paint, which is prosade and grease makeup. Um, you can use that, but I don't like that because it leaves your mask tacky and you've got to powder it with a clear setting powder. So it just adds a step. I'm, I'm, I'm a one step fan. What a geeks. Rag, alcohol. I'm trying to figure out a road trip to New Hampshire to check out on an overload this year. October is turning into a busy month. Heck yeah, it is. October is always a busy month. It's just a differently busy month for me. I'll drive her. Poor figure. That's right. Is Al on? Al's on. Hello, Al. You're saying antiquing. Every time I'm out looking at Halloween stuff, I'm looking for small statues with goofy colors that I can make look cool from the video you did years ago. <laughs> yes. Uh, 
Yeah, that was a dry brushing and antiquing video. I, I showed both techniques, because both of them get you a similar result. And this one really shines with the, uh, with the rub out, because you know, that latex color isn't wrong. You know, it's kind of nice, but you need to, to you know, give it a little more depth. And this rub out does that. Sean Rayle says, Driver 5.0, been saving, finally got to the point where I could get it. Sean got for too. Justin Piper, love me some more things. Stacy says, I just saw that Netherworld is open every weekday in October. Road trip. Uh, yeah, Netherworld's open a lot, all the time. Um, and we'll, we'll see how the season goes for them. I hope it goes well. Lockhart Monster Fab, Reaper number two is dressed. Nothing like watching liquid nails dry. Heck yeah, especially on a wet day like today. That's going to take a while, bud. Justin Finder says, what other masks do you have that would go good in a slaughterhouse? Um, well, I, uh, I just finished this Minotaur, see? Um, yeah, the goat the Minotaur. Uh, I would love to do a goat man, like a goat man hollow type mask. Um, the inbreds, oh yeah, I have an inbred. Man, I make a lot of masks. Inbreds are good. Yeah, they're good for that. Courtney says, dude, going to an antique thrift store is one of my favorite things for hunting costume bits and pieces. Yeah, I did that a long time when I was work when I was doing my monster museum and trying to build it up. I did a lot of antiquing. Cordova says it's a great video, very distinct differences. Limelight says that looks so good. Bill Bachelor. Thank you. Sorry if I missed it. What's the haunt season look like for Dark Hour? Uh, it doesn't. Uh, we're doing some backstage tours a week of Halloween. Other than that, our show is, is closed down. Uh, Al, what, what's your haunt season looking like, sir? Mikey Eddie says, just picture walking into the local butcher. They are wearing that mask behind the counter. Oh, you know the food is good. People keep shopping there. Because them dudes is crazy. Lisa says, LA County bans trick-or-treating. I wonder if that is going to spread. Uh, it's possible that it will, but uh, California also has a bit of a reputation for overreacting a touch. Um, and I do think that that is a bit of overreacting. I wouldn't call trick-or-treating a super spreader. I think concerts and conventions are higher up on the list, honestly, um, just in how people are, you know, hang out there and how people spend their time. Lane says, we don't have Halloween with Serbia, but I like to do makeup on Halloween and my mom looks at me like I'm crazy. The only thing I struggle with is getting latex here. Yeah, you know what, in a, a lot of the time it is hard to get uh, the same materials that we use here, and really we take for granted um, in, in other countries. Through the YouTube channel, uh, I get asked a lot, like, you know, I'm in India, how can I get, you know, Prozade? I don't know, and then I have to look and find out, and I help, and, you know, I do what I can to help people, but there are times when there's not much I can do. There was a, uh, I, I was contacted by a guy in Zimbabwe, and he said, I want to make masks. What can I do? I need to get latex. I want to make masks. And uh, so I talked to him for a while. And I'm like, let's just start making paper mache masks. Start making masks, and then you can learn. And then it, it turns out later I did some digging, and I found a balloon factory like the next country over, but he could buy latex from them. So, you know, that, whenever I get to do something like that, that's always very cool. All right, so this is not done painted at all, but that's, I mean, look at how many bones we got on there that quick with just that rub out technique. Sean Rangel says that LA updated their release and retracted it now, and they don't recommend it, but they'll trigger free Yeah. Really, to it. Oh, no, I mean, I, there's so many other things that they could have gone after, you know? And I, I don't think trigger. Trick or treating is such a morale boost for kids. And let's face it, you know, kids have been kicked in the teeth this whole year. Um, everybody has. So to, now if it's, it, and I think that you can do it safely. I think that you can trick or treat safely. Can you run 33 
30,000 people to a haunted house and haunt season safely, not without significant changes. And we made the decision that we didn't have enough time or it would not make enough money for us to make all those changes in order to do it safely. You can trick or treat safely. So I think that that was part of that peel back is that they had to acknowledge, well, you can make some changes and do it right. Shop and get pictures. Yeah, and get cheeseburgers because those are delicious. Mostly Larry, the cheeseburgers. Larry Hughes says, if we protest Halloween, it will be okay, so if that is what it takes. Grim Hollow, Grimwood Hollow, sorry, it's still beast. I'm so hooked on monsters and so hooked on you. Thank you so much for all this amazing things. Hooray, thank you so much. It's so kind. Courtney says, so is that your usual mix in the airbrush? And you're using the alcohol soap drag to wipe it down. That is my alcohol based pinata ink. You see me use the latex mask paint and you see me use pinata inks. Those are the, kind of the only two things I use to paint masks with. And yes, what you're seeing me brush on and wipe off is pinata alcohol based ink. It's about 20% ink and 80% uh, alcohol because it's kind of a, I'm doing a wash. I'm going to take this blue that I used on the uh, Jack Frost. I'm going to add a little bit of color to it. I'm going to do it on the worm. I want it to be purple. I'm going to add some red to this. I don't want to make any more. I'm going to use what I got. Justin Pfeiffer. I will be so depressed if Halloween is canceled this year. My first home haunt here. Okay, so Justin, they cannot cancel Halloween. Halloween is a date, all right? Halloween is a date on the calendar. It's October 31st, that's Halloween. Um, Halloween is also a spirit. It is something, it is an energy that we have and a feeling towards that day of the year, that night. That can't be canceled. You can't cancel feelings. You can't cancel a date on the calendar. Halloween is going to happen. Now, don't take this wrong. You're being a little selfish. Set up your yard, yard haunt for anybody who wants to, to drive by and look at. Um, set it up. People need that boost. People need that lift. People need to see, look, that's someone celebrating right now. The world needs that. So uh, I hate to say this, but right now it's not about you. It's about all the people who are used to seeing you or, or seeing others celebrate. Let the world see you celebrate um, because Halloween has a distinct advantage. Halloween and Christmas both. They are the most visual holidays that we have. Uh, you can see Halloween in someone's yard. You don't have to go touch it. You don't have to get within six feet of it. Set it up. Let people look at it. Let people drive by really slow. Cause a traffic jam on your street. They'll be fine. Um, and, uh, and enjoy the holiday in that way. Set outside, um, you know, in lawn chairs and, and watch them enjoy your work, you know. Um, it, it's not that Halloween's going to be canceled. Halloween's going to be different. Um, things happen different all the time to us, creators, makers. Take that difference and just, you know, maybe something didn't work out the way that I wanted to when I was making it. And that just means it's going to be a little bit different, and that's fine. Um, celebrate. It'll be different. It can't be canceled. Do you have videos of your haunted houses? Um, well, Dark Hour Haunted House has a YouTube channel, and I have a YouTube channel. I've done some videos at my YouTube, at my haunted house. So there's some videos that show parts of it, but is there like a straight walkthrough, 20 minute long video of Dark Hour? There really isn't. But um, you, I think you get a good sense for it when uh, you look at our YouTube channel and such. Justin Rudy says hello. Hey, Justin Rudy. Cat Swift. They retracted the ban this afternoon, but kept the ban on parties and haunted houses. They just don't want folks to not be in groups. Give an inch, they will take them on. Uh, I, I understand that. I, I get that. Um, I think the trick-or-treating is easier to control. When you do the rub-out method, do you still seal it? Yeah, just seal it after. 
Well, I can tell that's a fun color. Woo -hoo -hoo. And that's going to go on this uh, Beach Lord. Let me, um, A, put the lid on. Never leave a airbrush container with the lid off. And I have to find, I'm going to go back to my blue rag. So I had a brown rag. And then whatever color is on here is going to bleed into the other mask. So i got to be careful. We must be cautious. I love the mask behind Alan with the horn and skull. It's Rob's. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is a mask that Rob did. He sculpted uh, the sculpted deer skull, and he did that. So right there, uh, it's kind of a Wendigo-ish. Yeah. Geeks, what's the mask behind you with the black eye and yellow neck? That's not a mask. That is a head form that I have painted many masks on, so it kind of gets a paint job everywhere the mask isn't. Okay, Nicholas Splinter. I meant no offense by bringing up Spider-Man earlier. I admire and respect your work on the no. I just love the result. Yeah, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't offended. I hope I didn't seem offended. Um, you, know, you get that a lot, you know. Um, there, there's, there's some archetype creatures out there, and Green Goblin is certainly one of them. Oh, I love this color. Justin Rudy, making masks across and busts and man cave full of horror memorabilia Halloween. They complete feels kind of year round. There's nothing better than cold weather and haunted houses and outside home decor. Yeah. You're right, Jim. Grimwood. Oh. Hashtag Halloween is not canceled. Look up these videos, everyone. It's in our hearts and souls. Yeah. Cat Swift says, we're working with folks to decorate and have drive around checking things out like you do with Christmas life. Yep. Yeah, plan a route, do a tour, you know. Sure, look at that. Look at the detail that came out of that with that rub. Woo! Sexy worm. <laughs> you can't cancel a lifestyle. Stephen Haynes says the reason you are the legend. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a legend. Let I just love monsters. What's that? Thank you. says let your creep flag fly. Yeah. Jamie Thaxter says I'm putting my Halloween stuff up this year. Okay. Lena says, I had to order latex from England, and I had to save up my money for months. By the way, my birthday is on Halloween. Oh, that's awesome. That you guys awesome. can't see what I'm doing at all. But well, I'm just doing this again, so. Cat Swift, also encouraging folks to do old-timey things. Neighborhoods all doing pumpkin carving and setting up the yard, even vote online. Yeah. Justin Pfeiffer, did you say you had a goat for the swap? I believe the inbreds are, yes. Now, the goat man that I want to do isn't on the site because I haven't done it yet. With my goat sculpt, I've made my three-eyed goat that I wanted to, and I have made, I made a three-eyed goat, and I did the minotaur, and I think that's all I've done with the goat. You did, the, you did Brandon's four -horned. Oh, yeah, and I did a four-horned goat, which was beautiful, too. Um, and I'm not saying it's beautiful because I made it. That would be a little weird. It was beautiful because um, I took their concept art and I made their concept, and I was very happy with it. Sometimes when the wife is watching a cooking show and I am nearby and I watch the cooking show, I think it's weird when the cook will make something and then taste it and say, oh my gosh, that's perfect. I thought like that was a little conceited, but you know what? No, it's not, it's not their work. It's not what they did. It's an appreciation of the process. And sometimes I get caught up in the appreciation of my process um, and I just like, you know, what I'm doing. I like making monsters. It's fun. Misty Jezereski, I don't know if we're going to have trick-or-treaters, but I'm turning my yarn into a symptom. Hooray! Chad Smith, someone asked me if I'm going to decorate my yard since I have no haunt and live in 
BFB. I said, totally. I decorate for me. Huh. Enjoy it. Great. That's awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm, I have a whole bunch of different stuff that we're doing this year. Little girl, I'm doing the great pumpkin jack o' lantern thing. So I will do less than 31 days unless I get a great deal on pumpkins. Good job, Philip. I hear you. Amanda Wilson, I've been building a cemetery fence, and my neighbors already slow down to look and shout out their windows to let me know what they like. At least you think that's what that one finger means. Of course they do. Of course they do. You know what? Uh, in, in all honesty, hallelujah, you're doing something. There's a lot of people who go through the world, they just don't do anything. Um, and, and I think that, you know, right now the world needs people who do something. I am liking the look of this one. What do you think, honey? Think about these colors. It, it looks a little brown on camera. It's a little more purpley in, in real life. Kind of worm sign to me. Worm sign. Okay, so this has to dry before I can paint those teeth. Bill Bachelor said the speech is right up there at the Gettysburg, Gettysburg address. Uh, hey, um, uh, you hit me on something I'm passionate about, I might I might talk a little. Ezekiel says, I'm a Halloween guy in my neighborhood. The kids have expectations. I ain't letting them down. So, uh, that whole time when I was doing those, I forgot about him. And I need to do a rub out on him. I like this color, so we'll do this rub out. However, I'm just about out of that color, aren't I? That's the brown, that's not it. Justin Pfeiffer, how much is the zombie looking one bottom right corner of screen? Well, Justin, not sure what you're looking at. And I am. Oh, of course. And we look for patterns, for sure. What is the name of the latex for mask making? Um, it is called casting latex. Casting latex is what you want. Obsessed. That is sexy red right there. That's red. Can't cancel my Halloween part. Mine is called casting latex. Didn't think you were. I just wanted to be sure. Halloween would be different. It's still the best day of the year since Nicholas. Yeah. That's a mean looking leech. <laughs> yeah. He Bill fed Bachelor. on something. Ezekiel, I moved into my neighborhood in December, so I've not moved into my neighborhood in December, so I'm not sure what my neighbors will be doing. But I'll be considering this Halloween as my I'm here announcement. Poor monger. If your treat is canceled this year, I'll be handing out popcorn balls to all the raccoons that visit my trash can type. Heck yeah. Justin Ruby, I really like the tongue of red. Any chance you know the name of the color? Oh, Justin, I just mixed it up. Um, it was Sapphire Blue from Pinata Inks and Chili Pepper Red. Sapphire Blue and Chili Pepper Red. That was the two colors I mixed together. This one's a little tired. This one has seen some stuff. We're going to throw it away because I have new ones when I buy all those bottles as uh, I was talking to Pretzelbot about earlier. Before you are, I was watching another artist that totally gave you props for your work, the man of the Philip Earl, Alan, I like the way, oh, okay, that didn't sound right. What did he say? Hey, Philip, I like the way you rubbed that worm. Wait, that didn't sound right. Well, what happens? Lisa Eric says the Yule Goat. Uh, oh, yeah, I did a Yule Goat, yes. Yeah. Says, would the goat be done before Halloween? Um, honey, what's today's date? It's yes, the, before Halloween. Yes. The ninth of September. Is the this is this is the orders that I've got, and there's five of those right now that I know are going to be done in, within two days, so they'll be gone. So then I'll have six others. So yeah, Halloween, no problem. And I, I probably, I would say by October 10th at the latest. Now I thinned down that color with more alcohol, so I had more of it. Uh, 
and I don't have to match or anything, and I'm going to do this in front of us. Bill Batchelor, that is our Jack Frost. I'm sending you a link so you can see the finished product. Hooray. Stacy just beat you. Uh, oh, Stacy got the goat. Great job, Stacy. I got the I got Jack Frost. Justin says behind war pigment. It's on me. Justin, I Okay, so okay. what's behind war pigment is just the head form. It's just the head form. Get that color, or is it just out of a box? Uh, uh, I mixed it up. I mixed it up. It was 50% chili pepper red, and then 50% um, sapphire blue from Pinata Inks. ideas for yard decorations, but always too late, so I built up an army of skeletons. That's awesome. Nothing wrong with an army of skeletons being your decorations. I can vouch for the inbred. Alan does an amazing, they're amazing and very creepy. The inbreds were a custom order. Uh, we have the inbreds blanks yeah. on the website. We do not have a... Did you not take pictures of those? I took pictures of them, but I did not. I, I did not uh, put them on the website. I just the blanks. I didn't take. I didn't take pictures of the animals because they went immediately to the box. Pretzel bot. I'm totally going to make your hanging cage too. Oh, cool. Um, and. I don't know if you guys can post Instagram links, and I mean my moderators. I know that no one else can. Um, but Pretzelbot is on Instagram and does amazing foam work uh, with EVA foam. Amazing costume work kind of in general. Um, so if one of the mods can find Pretzelbot on Instagram and post that link, I hope you don't mind. But uh, you guys should really see some of the awesome stuff that they do with uh, EVA foam and costumes in general. Really impressive work. Mike's one of the works. I'm pulling double duty watching YouTube Wednesday on one window and this in another. Huh. the organicness of this rub out technique. You know, you can leave all these little splotches or you can work and, uh, you know, kind of work them out. Um, I met an artist in the FX Entertainment Division who said that he worked for three years and I ran my own font and taught FX classes. And I still learn things from you all the time. You are a horrific genius. Oh, thank you so much. Who was that, honey? Grimwood Holland. Oh, well, very cool. Uh, I just, you know, I just love what I do, and I think a lot of folks who love what they do like to tinker and play around and mess with stuff, and that's me. I'm the same. Courtney says I'm a sucker for a good red, no pun intended. Oh, look at that. that that's fun, isn't it? When I, uh, this is Elena in Serbia. When I ordered latex, I ordered two bottles of fake blood. I was so disappointed spending that much money. When I opened the bottle, blood was literally purple. I was so sad. Uh, yeah, um, normally I make my own food coloring and Elmer's glue. Elmer's glue and food coloring make a really nice blood. So I think it's time to get, well, okay, so we started, what, at 7.30 today, and now it's 9.30, and I have War Pig and Baked Out, I have the Krampus Baked Out, I have Jack Frost Baked Out, Baked Out, not Baked Out, Baked Out, and I have a worm based out. And the worm's almost done. Let's grab that pumpkin. Over here, it's pumpkin time. Pumpkin time. Why aren't you wearing a respirator? Uh, I have two industrial air scrubbers here. And uh, like right there's one. It's sucking the particles up and out. Um, it's not even like hazy in here. This is, ha, you think this is bad. 
You should see it when we're doing metallics. That's terrible. Um, another air scrubber is right up over there. How do you what? How do I make like a small chest, this is Paul Bennett, a small chest from front neck to upper chest? Do I pour latex on the plate or something or not use latex? What would you recommend? I would be adding blood to its cut first. I would sculpt it on a flat table in clay, just sculpt it in clay, and then you can just do a latex, paint latex onto the clay and peel it off, and then that's your chest. Al Driver wants to know how your November is. Um, honey, how's my November looking? Krampus labs. I have two Krampus labs. November 14th and 15th. November 14th and, 15th. and maybe that's all I have scheduled. We'll see. We also might be going back to uh, Dark Out to start our Christmas show. All right. This is the brownish red rub out that I used on War Piggin. I'm going to add some black to that and we're going to rub out the pumpkin the same way. I've been wanting to do a clown circus thing for my yard. Have you got any ideas on how to make a big impression with me doing it myself and limited funds? Yes. Um, you may have limited funds, but you're going to have access to some resources. You have to figure out what those resources are and how to best use them to your advantage. Um, now, one of the things that I love to do uh, in order to make a big impression with uh, doing very little bit of work is shadows. So you can take LED lights, like a single LED light, and if it hits an action figure that is you know, four inches in front of it, on that wall 15 feet away, that's an eight-foot monster. It's very easy to get that action figure to move a little bit, and then you have a, the big moving monster shadow over there. So uh, think about what you have. What can you do? Do you have access to like a cricket cutting machine where you can cut out silhouettes and then do shadow? Do you have access to four by eight sheet material where you could actually do cutouts um, that are full size and put those up? Um, think in terms of big visual impact, not in terms of detail-oriented special effects. Uh, it, it's pretty simple to do, have big visual impact for actually not a lot of money. Um, and a white wall with a projection on it can look black. Who is the person that redo the spirit Halloween animatronics? 1980s. Um, didn't. Uh, KT do Halloween, just redo uh, one of them. I don't know who you mean exactly, but I mean, I've had several people redo them. I've had to redo a couple in my lifetime. <coughs> so I don't know exactly what you're asking, nor do I know how to answer it, but I want to help you. I'm halfway through my Myers mask. Problem is, it looks like William Shatner now, not William Shatner 40 years ago. Um, I think William Shatner now is scarier. He's a little heftier than he used to be. That's for show. And we're going to switch too. We're going to switch, and we're not going to use um, the paper towel. I'm just going to change up, and I'm going to try. I'm going to grab some new gloves.
all of rock. So whenever you're doing something a little bit experimental, start on the back. Justin, I sent you uh, a link to the pumpkin head, the coordinator. The blank is on the website, and uh, this is the first one. In fact, the blank that you see is what he's using right now. So as soon as it's done, it'll be on the website, but I also sent you the price. Just getting this, this is a rag now. This is a little more rubbing power. In case this is a little too heavy for me. Bill Bachelor says same price for the blue mask, Jack Frost with just white, long, stringy hair. Um, uh, same price as what? I don't know what. I sent Bill the link to the Jack Frost on the website. The only thing different would be he wouldn't have the hat. Well, and the icicle beard, I guess. Skinbone says coloring on all the masks looks amazing. Oh, thanks. Justin Rudy, have you ever removed an animatronic innards and sculpted a monster that can move to replace it? Yes. Yes, I have. Uh, I do that a lot with Scare Factory stuff. Because after a while, that stuff just kind of stops working. Oh, that's going to be sexy. All right. Crypto Nights, thanks again for speaking to me the other day about the Saturn Tan Gel. Do you have to water it down, or can you apply it straight? Um, I always apply it straight. That's how I do it. Does the Krampus have a rub out on it? Yes, it does. A little bit of a different style of rub out. <laughs> Thank you. You like that? You know, this is weird, but I really like your wife's voice. It's great. I like my wife's voice, too. Thank you. See, uh, Courtney says, thought of another one. Sorry for so many questions. It's all good. What's your go to method for repairing damaged latex foam props from patrons being asked at? Um, the same reason you would if it was sun rot or anything else. You um, latex it together with latex and paper towel, and then you do a repaint. Bill Bachelor, I'll do the best. Do you got orders to fill, and you stop to answer our question in detail. It's a master class every night here, sir. Uh, as much as possible, yeah. I mean, I. this is... This is uh, this is what we do. You're all my friends, so why not help you out? If I know it, you know what? And we have such a talented crew here. Maybe someone else knows it, and I don't. Jason Augustini, hey Alan, hope all is well. I'm doing a foam fill on a mask to make a severed head. Which type of lock type foam do you use? Uh, the normal window and door. That's what I normally use. Just the regular old Loctite foam. 1980 says, thank you for those candy cauliflower flavored pumpkins. Me too. Uh, hi, Rue. Oh, this is sexy. Oh, oh. Sorry. <laughs> Excited over here. I'm all but Clint. Al says, Rue puts flyers back in the right drawer. Yes, Rue. Not that I think it's too dumb, Rue. Can already tell that pumpkin mask paint job is going to look awesome, says Al Mantra. Bruce contrast. Says, it's going to have contrast. Bruce says that seriously got out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> that, whole, that whole leg. It did. Christina Montai, what other movie costume makeup have you done? Uh, well, I don't do a lot for movies. I'm a haunted house guy. I do haunted house stuff. Now, sometimes a haunted house will press something from a movie. And sometimes a theme park like Universal will have a license to a movie, and I might make something for them. So, but I don't, don't normally. Now, we've done a lot of Wolfmen. We had a cool vampire haunted house at uh, Dark Hour two years last year. Last year. And uh, for that, I got to do the Lost Boys. I got to do Blade. You know, we, we got to do a lot of cool stuff for, in that vein. Uh, I make Wolfmen quite a bit. Um, I've been known to make a Frankenstein or two. To, uh, I've had to do Freddy. That's always like radio stations requested. Justin Rudy says, oh, this pumpkin is going to be not nice, and you are doing a pretty dark wash. And by not nice, I mean not friendly. Yes. Justin Piper, okay, thank you. If you can email me the pictures of the inverts. I got you, Justin. I 
I've got you taken care of. Courtney, I really want to try to keep in contact with you guys better. I've been missing y'all. I don't have Facebook. What's the other good ways to keep in contact with you lovely girls? Uh, hang out on YouTube. Uh, we're, we're there. I mean, I'm on YouTube quite a bit. And Instagram. And Instagram. Instagram's another good way. What a great visual medium Instagram is. Skin and Bone says you made yourself, right, Alan? A what? You made yourself. Uh, you know what? I'm surprised every time it turns out good. I'll be honest with you. There's this man that looks great. Justin Rudy, I'm always afraid to do black or really dark washes. I'm afraid it will darken or cover too much. Yeah, well then you fix it. Then you then you go in and dry brush. And you spot fix whatever you messed up. <laughs> What's that? Uh, this is, I mean, it's an antique is what you're doing. You're putting something on really wet and then you're removing it. Uh, it's, it's an antiquing technique. Uh, you're just not using an antique gel. You're just using uh, like an alcohol-based, uh, you know, paint. Rodney Poe, how much would the pumpkin be foam-filled with a PVC pipe in it to put on a front? Uh, now, Rodney, I'm going to be honest with you. Normally, I could just answer that for you. I am running on so little sleep. I'm going to have to do that math later. Right now, I have on my art brain, and it is all that I can manage to form sentences. But I think my wife knows. Yeah, like, see, I think the mouth is too neutral now, and I would want to put a little more yellow back into that. So I'll do it. But this darkness is what I want to this this uh, real dark wash. And that's why it looked really garish when I first put that on. Uh, but the color, it was like a stupid bright orange and it was, you know, um, really like bright, happy green. But now, now we're toning it down and it's just, it's, it's just graying out and looking um, mean. What is your favorite mask to make? Uh, I like werewolves. But I don't really have a favorite. I'm excited kind of every time. That is an instant vintage look. Amazing. And like when I airbrushed this, I wasn't worried about going over a little bit around the stem. I wasn't worried about, you know, that kind of stuff. I just, uh, I, because I, I knew the wash is going to even things out and just help. The details on the pumpkin really popped. Beautiful work. Thanks. That pumpkin was not my favorite sculpt of yours, but now I'm really digging it. I'm sure you had to it all along. Yeah. Does alcohol-based ink work better for the same as acrylic water-based paints than for rub outs? No. Uh, so here's the problem, all right? If, if I paint this with something water-based, which the latex paint that I use is water-based, and then I tried to do a water-based rub-out on top of it, I would rub off both layers because they're both rub off with water. So you have to paint first with the latex paint, which is water-based, let that dry, and then you do your alcohol work on top of that because the alcohol will not rub off the water-based. Um, now, I guess you could do it the other way around, but it's a lot easier to make alcohol-based things translucent than it is um, water-based things. Water-based things tend to go, yes? Uh, we are painting our butts off to our beauty. I'm a little behind on orders. I didn't know if the storm was gonna knock out my power. So we are painting all of the things we are painting. Um, 
Uh, this is the uh, pumpkin. The pumpkin is right here. So he showed up and uh, pretty happy with that. I'm going to pop the yellow inside the mouth a little bit more uh, with a dry brush. And but I'm actually pretty happy. I might hit this a little bit with orange to punch it up a little more, but I'm very happy with where it's at in all honesty. But, so that's that, and then War Pigeon is here. Uh, he gets his normal airbrush that comes next. He's gonna get some airbrush. This is the Krampus happening. And then um, that is Jack Frost. He'll get some airbrush, and the Worm is gonna get some airbrush. And I think someone's drying in the other room. No, I got them all in. No one's in the other room. Yes. Yeah. Because uh, it's humid, so it's laying a little bit more than usual. Okay. Just a five says, so I did the corks to the skeleton with the paint caulking nap. Yes, will let that same technique work to make a pool of blood with some teeth and dental tools? Will that same technique work? Did a corpse in with a skeleton with a paint, caulk, and napa? Yes, you can, you can do a rub out over top of uh, caulk and napa sculpting. You can do an alcohol based rub out. Alright. Courtney asked him, can I Courtney? Good night, Courtney. Thanks, Good for, night, Courtney. Thanks for hanging out. Good talking to you. And here he says, maybe full leaf colors to break up the neck of the pumpkin. Um, no, see, I wanted that green. I didn't necessarily like, want that fall color right away. Uh, you get so much fall color in this orange. That's what they're asking. You're going to add any green yellow when you get to I'm going to pop his uh, leaves maybe a little bit with green, but I want that a little muted. And now this guy gets a dry brush. I really like the vine detail in the pumpkin mouth. At least I think that's what I'm seeing. Yeah, you're, you're seeing just some pumpkin innards that I did on there. is going to the UK, isn't it, honey? No, that's just when I painted the mask, some of it got on the head form. So, no, it doesn't have any eyes in it. What type of horns for the crumpets? Uh, just like a scimitar horn. Jack Frost and Pumpkinhead are my two favorites at the moment. 
Uh, you know what? This sort of color scheme is real hard to beat. And what I just did now is I give him a little bit of uh, pink and red on his nose. It looks like he's a little bit frostbitten himself and a little bit on the tips of the ears. And uh, that sort of sells that. A lot of him happens when you get to um, the silicone work on it and glitter and all that stuff. Yes, I said glitter. Simultan what? I'm thinking. Uh, it is a color very similar to saddle tan. It is a. Um, it is called. Oh my gosh, I'm having a real hard time with thinking of things tonight. Hang on a sec, I'll find it. Havana Brown. It's called Havana Brown. Una. It's Havana. Uh, so yeah, I need a little bit of, I gotta clean this airbrush out a little bit. Jesse Papa Bear, it's a beautiful antique technique. Do the same thing with painting furniture, putting down bright base colors, using oil stains of different colors, and wiping back something that's outstanding. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's it's the same stuff. And you know what? What's funny is that latex is is a, the sap from a rubber tree. So. I mean, I'm, I'm painting an organic material the same way that you do when you're working with wood. It's an organic material. It seems a little more chemically, but don't forget that it is the tree sap from a rubber tree. And a wood stain actually works very well on latex. I get them from Amazon. Do you use PayPal? You know what? Dick Blick. Dick Blick is who I get them from now. I used to get them from Amazon. I found more consistent pricing on Dick Blick. The carburetor cleaner, by the way, just see how it stretches out and just destroys the structural integrity of gloves. Uh, don't get it on your skin if you can help it. And that's why whenever I use it, I keep my dogs clear too. Okay, I will, oh, I was gonna get some new gloves and put um, some red in that airbrush. Um, FW and Pinata are pretty similar. I find Pinata's a little bit less expensive and frankly, I used to get my uh, FW inks from uh, Hobby Lobby and they stopped carrying them. FW is a little bit squirrely on how often they release product, so it wasn't as consistent as I needed it to be. So, and that's why Hobby Lobby stopped ordering from them. It's hard to get them from them. So, yeah. It's a, it's a dead airbrush. Probably shouldn't have that either. Sorry, bud. 
Okay, uh, I was red, airbrush. Look, chili pepper red. Before I do that, I want to get that um, carburetor cleaner out of the airbrush. I'm going to shoot a little bit of alcohol into it. The uh, carburetor cleaner will actually eat the chrome off of the airbrush. So it's good to run alcohol through it too afterwards. Now, red is a wonderful color. Because you don't have to, like, my favorite thing to spray after any other color is black. Because black will beat up whatever color is in there and make it black too. Red kind of does the same thing. Um, purple does the same thing. If I have to spray a white or a yellow, you have to clean the snot out of the airbrush. Um, or else that color is going to be tainted. And you know, and if I use blue and you go to spray red, then you're going to spray green. It's not good. Steve Killen, been a long time since I caught you live. You still check the tip of the heat gun with your hand. Without doubt, you got to make sure it's working, man. I don't even know why y'all make fun of me. Love your work. <laughs> That's next level craftsman stuff right there. Okay, I'm happy with that red that I'm getting out of there. Now let's go to work on these wounds. so many of these stitches to do, they're going to see some of them. Because some jerk, when he was sculpting this, said, man, I want to put 700 stitches on it, Al Driver. Yeah, so you're not washing it, you're painting it. Uh, thin your washes down a little more, uh, and they're going to be uh, like subtle. You want them subtle. Our driver says it can be used to more. <laughs> Where do you get your airbrushes at? Uh, this is a Pache H, and I get it right from Chuck Passion at Pache. We're getting there. See, with the, the detail, you know, just that little bit that I did keeps it from being so flat. Um, and uh, I'm going to see if anybody else needs red. Who else needs some red? We're going to put it on our uh, crown office here. Just hit those gums with red again. But under the eye makes him feel alive. Ezekiel says, I have one of the original piggins, and I definitely need to complete the set. Al did a good job of this. Well, I broke the piggin mold, 
and Al was like, but I wanted to buy another piggin. And then he got the idea that he would make another one. So he came down, we did a little monster camp with Al, and uh, that's how War Piggin came about. And then he put him in a big white fursuit and took him out in the woods to take him. That's right. Well, what's funny is, like, the second War Piggin ever made was actually went to a Redskins game. Uh, it was painted up with a Redskins mohawk and everything, and it made the uh, Redskins Facebook page and stuff. <laughs> All right, so, um, boy, I just knocked out those. Do, do, do. No. No. One, two, three, four. He's five. Um, and he's probably dry enough now where I can hit him. Talking to myself, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Kelly Porter. We are going to go all out as usual this year with our haunted graveyard. That's great. I love that. Don't be scared. Ezekiel says, I picked my kids up from school a few times with picking on them. <laughs> that's, that's how you not get invited to PTA meetings, Ezekiel. Good thinking. Justin Ruby, I use Perma Wet, which I love. And it is a great product, but it's pretty pricey. If you don't need great realistic blood mixes. I heard there's a good corn syrup based variety of maize. Um, yes, there's lots of great blood out there. There is Haunt Sauce, which is way cheaper. That's from Rip City FX. Now, Purple Blood's great. It's probably, it's, it's one of the best. Um, but also, you can take the um, Createx Gel Medium. Hold on. Gel Gloss Medium. Uh, Createx Gel Gloss Medium and um, add red food coloring to it and it looks great. Keep corn syrup off of your masks. That's You're asking bugs to eat it down the road. Best way to keep them. 1980 says mascot masks on the new COVID business model. Steve Cohart, Alan, would you have time to complete a grave digger before Monster Camp? Uh, Steve Cohart is Monster Camp 7 and I'll be in October. Yes. Yes, I would. Listen. I really want to do a Halloween themed grave digger. So. If you're willing to do that, I could kind of kill two birds with one stone. It would be a grave digger, but a little more orange and black, more Halloween rather than Haunted Mansion. Let me know if you're up for that. I wouldn't charge any more for it, but I was going to charge more for it. So I'm going to do a little more for it. It's not okay, it says, man, that pumpkin is looking awesome. Hey, thanks. But if Scott just wants the original, if, if Scott just wants the original, then I have time to do that, too. We have time for that, too, Scott. Don't let that change your, your decision. Don't let me bully you into doing something really cool. Stands firm, Scott. Don't let him change your mind. What would you like for me to do with these leaves, honey? I, 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 well, right now they just look like green ivy. I like them. I think it may be a little bit of gold. Maybe, I say gold, I mean like a mustard like yellow. A little bit of, a, of some rust or some red. Okay, says a Voodoo Man Creole grave digger would be different with the black, white colors. I've done a Ringmaster version. I've done a, uh, I've done a Ringmaster version, and I've done a lot of the regular grave digger. Just 
Just a Rudy. You've been sculpting up new masks on Wednesday. I'm assuming you have to catch up on orders. Will there, will there, will there be any sculpting streams soon? Oh, absolutely. Of course. Yeah, I'll be doing sculpting streams um, real soon. Just couldn't do it tonight because you can catch up. Yeah, I had a little bit of catch up to do. Yeah. He's jack o' lantern. He needs a little bit of a little fall. A little fall. Your face is a little fall. Just straight green. It looks like ivy. Looks like awesome. He's you mispronounced the word awesome. Put, put a little put a little fall in there for white. Come on. Do it for a wife. <laughs> let it go, let it go. Oh my God. You're just waiting. <laughs> it's coming. Larry Hughes says, I have the Ringmaster version. That's right. You do, yes. That's right. Al Driver says, the pumpkin needs some stitches. <laughs> yeah, you need some stitches. Kirk Mattia, yes, this one, this this one is already paid and, and spoken for, but trying to snipe her. He's trying to snipe Lisa. <laughs> no, that one's this one's but we can always make you another one. He has already got a home, but we can always make another. Optinibration. To me, Halloween pumpkins usually come off as trying too hard to be scary and missing the mark. This one nails it perfectly. There's Lisa. He's all mine. I, uh, I wanted him to be, um, I wanted to mix a pumpkin mask with an inbred. So I, I turned this piece of the pumpkin into a cleft pellet, which is a common inbred trait. And if you look at him, like this is the regular nose with that big crease in it. And here's a nostril. And this nostril I turned into the triangular nose of the jack-o'-lantern. So I kind of mixed an inbred with a pumpkin, and I'm pretty happy with the results. <laughs> Warmonger says, put a little fall in there for Warmonger. <laughs> See, I like that. Just, just a, little, a little muted, a little soft. Does it have to be? It's a celebration. Your face is a Your face is a celebration. Thank you, Warmonger. You understand. Crypto night. Okay, how's that? Is that better? Yay. Okay. <laughs> Crypto night, when you proposed to your wife, did she know you made masks or did you wait till she already was locked down? <laughs> All right, so this isn't something like sometimes I make masks. Like, being a haunted house person, like that is, that is in every fiber of my being. Um, I, uh, I have to move monsters out of the way in order to love anyone else. So, yeah, she knew. We met at a haunted house. We met at a haunted house. <clears throat> it's not okay. Pumpkin guts are so squishy. Kurt Matthias says, okay, he's going to get the second one. It's always better. <laughs> That was very nice. I gotta, I gotta get him photographed. Justin Rudy, that wash turned him happy Halloween to probably going to standing in your woods when you're sleeping. <laughs> it's amazing how much of a difference washes make. Yeah. Limelight says, I noticed those details. I thought that was super unique and I love it. Let's see, Great Digger is Halloween with kick ass, says Car of Beauty. Yeah, like like the uh, you know, like a bat bow tie, uh, just really do them up Halloweeny. I love how you sell blanks to foster creativity. Sure. That little bit of fall made the leaves pop. Skin and bone says face my made wife, the leaves pop. My wife and I always say your face, except <laughs> somebody gets it. I don't even know what, how we ended up doing that. Morgan Shalou. Is it Morgan? Morgan started me on that. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Horror Beauty. 
Okay, and these eyes will get like screen, they'll get black screen. So they'll be super black. Okay, so I think that is set, and I do like the amount of yellow that I put on there. And maybe I'll do a little more yellow on uh, just a couple of these leaves. I'll pick a few leaves to make yellow. Are you going to do a body for this? Maybe introduce it to dark hour in the future? Uh, it's possible. I mean, I, I all of my stuff ends up, you know, I use it, so probably. Ezekiel says a Halloween grave digger would be awesome and would love to do the top hat. Will you add pumpkin seeds later? Uh, I don't think so. Not on this one. Rob O'Brien says he's a beauty. That is one great pumpkin. Great job. Robert White, there you are. She's mad at you. Honey White, why are you saying that? Robert White, who had the infrared fan. Death Row Catering, Alan, what would be your what would your last meal be? Cheeseburger. <laughs> Cheeseburger. I love cheeseburgers. That's probably my favorite food. Philip Arnold says dibs on being this pumpkin monster. Saul Thompson, looks great. Can you do a custom pennywise mask? I can. We'll tell you. Most of the time, um, custom masks, like a custom half mask. Uh, it's going to be 250 to 350 to 250 to 450 in all honesty depending upon is it a custom sculpt or you know how much is involved and clowns always cost three times as much so it, it'd be around 900 bucks why do clowns cost three times as much because there's so many clowns out there um, uh, in, in all honesty there are so many good pennywise masks out there you don't need me to make one for you Grab one from someone who already makes it. I want to make something unique, like a toenail golem. That's what I want to make. Um, making stuff that's already out there and super popular, like I'm not going to make a Jason mask. There's a bunch of guys who make awesome Jason masks. There's three guys, maybe five guys right now who make an awesome Michael Myers mask. Uh, so I don't have to, they do. Um, there are great Pennywise masks out there. So grab one from them. And if you need someone, if you need me to help you find someone, then um, I will, if you need me to help you find someone, let me know and I'll help you find somebody to make you that Pennywise mask or who already makes a really good one uh, because you shouldn't have to pay commission prices when it's something that's that common. Um, clowns cost three times as much. Maybe you want to be the guy to force Alan to make a clown and you want to pay that. That's fine. Uh, and I'll make the best Pennywise mask I can, but you don't have to. There's a lot of other options. Uh, when, when you get a wild hair and you will say, you know, you know what I want to be? I want to be a troll that has had 50 light bulbs smashed into his face. And now he's like part glass and stuff. That's what I want to be. I want to make that. I don't want to make Pennywise the clown for you. I don't want to make you Jason. I don't want to make you Freddy. I don't want to make Michael Myers. I want to make stuff you've never seen before. And and really cool He-Man characters, because no one else is making those. And I love them. Like Whiplash. That's a turkey walk. Amanda Wilson, mine and my husband's favorite holiday is Halloween. So we just fit to get married on Halloween. Yeah. And yeah, it was costumes required. This will be seven years married. That's awesome. Alan, have you tried the A1 burger from Hardee's, Carl's Jr.? Sadly, we don't have a uh, party. We have Carl's Jr. One of my favorite sandwiches at any fast food place is a Hardee's hot ham and cheese. But um, I love A1 on burgers, so I haven't had that, but I'm sure I would love it. Look in the camera. Look in the camera. Okay. Scott Colhart's going to do a Halloween grape digger. Oh, that's great. Yeah, Scott. let's do a... Let's do a Halloween Grave Digger. That sounds awesome. He is coming for Monster Camp 7 at the end of October. 7, end of October. So Great. Pick it up there. Okay. Hey, why? That's a lot. That's the same reason I don't make Star Wars numbers wrong, because there are just so many out there who already do. Yeah, and, and they're great. They're good at it. Um, why did I stop making silicone masks? Because Immortal Mask is just better than me. CFX, they're just better than me. Get it from them. You know? Uh, but if I'm if I make the only one of something, 
If no one else out there is making a Jack Frost, then I've got the best one. Is there any licensing issues with making a copyright mask? Absolutely there are. Uh, it is intellectual property theft. You are going to, you plan on selling it, then you plan to make profit from the intellectual property, the idea that they had, and they paid to make it famous. They paid to make people like it, and then you're taking advantage of it. Um, yes. Now, do I make a Mumra mask every now and then? Do I make uh, Masters of the Universe masks every now and then? I do. Um, right now, no one has a license to make Masters of the Universe masks. Um, and as soon as someone does, hands off, I stop doing it. Or I just make them for me. All of these Master of the Universe masks, pretty much, I'm making for me anyway, because I want to dress up like He-Man villains and go rough up He-Man at conventions, uh, like dressed as villains and just shove them around and stuff. I digress. Um, so I'm doing some of that for me. And just, I love them and I want them. I want them on the wall of my monster museum. So that's why they're going to be around. Um, but am I selling some? Yes, I'm funding that. Um, but I'm reasonable. I'm not mass producing. So, uh, you know, okay, we had a little bit of storm and we lost power, lost internet for a second. Um, so, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, if, if someone tried to order 50 of them from me for their store, I wouldn't sell it to them. One collector, two collectors, yes, I would. Now, I have a more rigid stance on that than most people do. I won't even remold a mannequin because that's theft uh, to me. So I, I won't remold a mannequin. Uh, I might do something really crude like a tape form in order to get just a general head shape, but I'm not gonna make a silicone mold of a mannequin so I can make more. I'm stealing that person's work. So yeah, there are some things to consider. Now, do I know of any mask makers who have been gone after? Uh, only the Saw franchise. I know that there was a Saw license, and I know someone who was went after by the Saw franchise films in order to stop them from making masks based off of the characters. Um, wife, can you pull up a picture of Jack Frost? I need a visual reference before I go any further. It's been a while since I painted one, so I want to make sure I'm doing it right. This cat. I will hold this kitty. Jones is not letting her work on it. Yeah. Don't want that. Yeah. Jones, Jones. He okay. wants mama. He doesn't want me. I'm he doesn't here. want me. Yeah, you got a picture? Yeah. Zoom. Tails up. Tail up. Okay, so what you're telling me is I'm done. Until I do. Ice and hat. Yeah, I have, I have ice and hat to do on him. Okay, so he's his paint is finished. Beard? Beard and eyebrows and yeah, he gets uh, the silicone treatment. That's what he gets next. His paint is done. Okay, boy, I'm behind on comments. Uh, Masato Pay said, bold face Cinnabite. He said what? Talking about original. Oh, yeah. Michael says, I'm only smoking Myers to see if I'm capable. Next, it will be all for my imagination because it's way easier. One life. It has to be Pennywise, but that moment in the movie where he's opening up his entire face for a little rose of tea. Yeah, you know what? I uh, That particular moment, I know three guys who make that mask, and they do a great job. I want a snowman mask, but also, how would you make a snowman costume light enough to run? Um, well, uh, they don't weigh much at all. The snowman costumes are upholstery foam that I do. Have you seen the snowman costume that I make? It's a whole costume. Hi, I work you just, me. hold on, you just make that ball, the bottom ball, smaller, so that instead of stopping at your ankles, basically, it stops at your knees. And which is the parade costume. Mm -hmm. I made one for someone who did a parade in it. I work in 
latex mask, what can I do with the latex leftovers? Uh, at this point in my career, I throw them out. A lot of people save them to make guts. I don't need that many guts. So um, I, uh, I just I trim the mask and then I throw them away. Uh, you, could, you could cut them and then make, make your own rubber bands. You could uh, make jar openers for your family for Christmas, just that disc of latex. Um, you could make guts. So, I mean, there's, there's lots of things you can do, but they're just not super awesomely useful. So rather than hold, hold on to them, I just throw them out. In two weeks, I'll have plenty anyway, you know. If I, just, if I, if I need them, I'll, I'll know two weeks in advance, and I'll start saving them and making them. How much for a painted one eye? One eye is a latex half mask, so he would be 75. Yes, one eye would be 75, unless you want hair on him, in which case if you get hair, he would be 100, because then he has hair. Okay, Mike, Mike's one of who works. When are you going to get a haircut? <laughs> um, From a bald man. I don't know. I actually want, I want um, down the road, I think I want to try getting a haircut into going back to work at Dark Cover. <laughs> I know that's a little silly, but um, yeah. That's it says, that's the bomb. Can and T do Halloween. Can I get an elf mask with Christmas bulbs and lights smashed in his face? You sold that idea. Yes, yes, you can. I could do that. Uh, I actually bought a bunch of acrylic um, Christmas bulbs the other day. We're talking about ideas. M &M mask. Candy. They're busted and chocolate coming down like a waterfall. So they're coming up with ideas. Would you do a commission sculpt of an angel turning into a devil mid transformation? Whoa. Um, I guess. Yeah. Yes. Boy, I'd have a hard time sculpting an angel. Like, I don't know if I got the chops for that. Sato says, I want a mask that is a man turning into a river. Did you answer what can you do with the strap latex? I did. Okay. To the greatest of my ability, which probably wasn't awesome. Lisa, Lisa wants you to sign this book. Okay. Just in review, I think a lot of artists tend to make these common characters, mainly the one I'm sure these fans, but sometimes I think it's more for profit, they don't sell. I guess that's what I think. Yeah, people know it'll sell, absolutely. Um, and, and that's okay, that's okay. It's okay to go a little low risk sometimes. Um, but uh, nothing ventured, nothing gained. How much do you grow as an artist when you do that? Uh, I am, I'm a little more driven, honestly, by growing as an artist than I am by monetary gain. Uh, I, don't, I don't run my company in a way to make a lot of money. I run my company in a way to provide necessary services and needs and products for the haunted house industry. It's not okay. I can see how it is tough for like Jason and Mike Myers. This is pretty much an old school hockey mask. And Mike was a mask that was pre-existing turned inside out. Uh, it wasn't turned inside out. It was just painted white. Harvey says, I've only seen the snowman mask, not the costume. Yeah, I'll have to get you some video. Uh, I'm very proud of that costume. It is something that I have done that breaks the human form rather well, and I, I love to do that. I saw a costume Adam Savage made with loops suspended on straps for a torso uh, costume. If the same idea was used to make the body of a snowman, it would be pretty light. Ezekiel says, do not get a haircut. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go a little longer. I'm not ready yet. I'm just going through some stuff. I think everybody is. Adding some tone to this. Got a real nice bruise color in here now. I'm just beefing up the contrast of this a little bit. I 
and all this was cut off the pig, right? So we have a nice bloody edge. This one off to the side, where you can see the kind of the, how the detail popped a little bit with that bit of airbrushing. I didn't realize it was 10:30, honey. So pretty much, you're good to hang out as long as you have battery on your computer. Uh, no, no. I may have to go get my... How long are you pressing on, Mr. Uh, I'm going to get these guys all painted. Uh, I, I want to get them all done, but I'm not too far from that. Okay. We'll press on. I'm we ready. got this, White. I'd rather you got it done. We can do it. But I am going to have to grab my charger here shortly. Okay. Did you hear me say that Lisa would like her pumpkin sign? Yes, I heard that. I'm mixing a little bit of a color over here for teeth, and I'm going to paint these teeth, and then I have to paint the Krampus's teeth. Did you sign uh, the mentor? Yes. never paint teeth with a brush this big. I'm really not painting the teeth. I'm putting some color on the teeth. I'm not calling these teeth painted because I was kind of cleaning my brush on them. Really hard to get any kind of detail with that. Hi, I'm from Louisiana. I'm new to your channel and so addicted to your techniques. I think my hubs is getting concerned. I keep right. texting him at work with things like, I'm learning how to make brains in a jar. He banned me from making the giant maggot, though, coward. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, Scott Colbert, you are going to pick yours up at Monster Camp, so I will not charge you shipping. Elena, thanks for answering all of my questions. I was listening this whole time while studying for my English competition. Right. Well, you're going to do great because you do very well. English is good. Yeah. Justin Rudy, when I painted the cave dweller after it was done painting, I went back with the original base color and lightly lightened all of the points. It just added a lot of depth. And I watched you do it on an older video. I don't know how I missed that considering I have watched every video you've ever made at this point pretty much, but I'm glad I caught it. If you watched every minute of every video that I ever made, then we have spent over uh, 500 hours together. Isn't that crazy? Alexa, what's 500 divided by 24? <laughs> 500 divided by 24 is 20.8322. We've spent a month together. Me? I'm just painting up these teeths. Well, I, I see comments churning, so... Yeah. I know, I'm just letting you know that I, you're going to have some I, catching up to do. I'm on I've been doing nothing but catching up Face is catching up. Scott Holmes, I've watched all 700 plus hours of <laughs> Star Trek, so challenge accepted. There you go. 
John Rangel says, that's more time than I spend with my real family. Well, <laughs> there is that. Justin says, I exaggerate some, but I have watched a lot. Stay tuned, guitars. Have you ever done the SFX work in movies, or would you? Um, would I? Well, for the right amount of money, a man will do anything. Let's be honest. But um, I have done some, but nothing huge. Um, I don't enjoy movie work. I am there. A lot of folks have the assumption that because I am a haunted house special effects artist, that means I am a failed movie special effects artist, and that's just not true. I mean, my my calling is haunted attractions, so that's what my work is geared towards. Uh, I mostly work for haunted attractions. Now, I'm doing a werewolf foot for a movie here coming up, and I'm doing a, uh, a werewolf mask for a movie here coming up. Two separate things. So, um, I, I do that kind of stuff on occasion, but normally it's lower budget movies um, who are okay with a haunted house style character, costume, whatever. Awesome, Mike. That's honestly why I did them. I wanted, when a haunted house wanted to do something, there would be a library of videos of how to to help them do it. That's why I started my channel. Mike's Haunted Woodworks. What would you charge to make a three piece mold? We got a friend that has an art studio that needs a mold reproduced. Um, well, it depends on the mold. Like, I can't give you a price, I'd have to see some images. Because, you know, you could. You, I could say, well, that would be like 400 bucks, and then you send me pictures and it's the size of a dump truck. So um, let's uh, send me some images and I will, I will help get you a price. And do they just need, need someone who knows molds to help them? Or is this a take it to my shop and do it all myself? What's the skeleton in the background for, YouTube Wednesday? I see no skeleton. What about a Yeti werewolf? What would be your opinion? Uh, I love doing white werewolves. I love white werewolves. Leia says, good night at 6 a.m. I need to sleep. Thank you. I hope I'm going to do great on my competition. Have a great night, and it looks amazing. Thank you so much. I appreciate you hanging out with us. Okay, I don't like this color so much for this Krampus. I want to brown up what I have. I'm gonna put a dark brown in there. It's white Krampus. Yeah. Yeah, but the, uh, they're all kind of flesh tone, with white hair and, you know. I'm finding burrow brown ink that I know I have. That I have a little bit of. Alexa, add Burrow Brown to my shopping list. Alexa, add Burrow Brown to my shopping list. Okay, so I have this dark maroon color that I just put a little bit of brown into, and I want to mix those up. So here's a trick. I'm going to put my tip over the fi my finger over the tip. And now when I hit the button, the airbrush bubbles, and that's mixing my ink in there. I'm thinking of turning the cellar into my new studio, and I need more room. The dragon is nearly finished. I'll put a new video on the Creepers page and join tonight's show. That's Dragon Okay. Very cool. You are the dragon whisperer, sir. I love looking at your dragons. They're awesome. The oh, thanks, wife.
the story of this mask and how I sculpted it was I had agreed to help someone do a two-piece mold. They wanted to learn how to do make a two-piece mold. So we agreed, we set a date, and um, I thought and assumed that they were going to bring a sculpture to mold. And I found out they left Arlington in order to come here. And yeah, it was here. Yeah. Um, uh, they left Arlington in order to come here. And in talking to them through Messenger, I found out they just wanted to mold something of mine. So I had to sculpt this in the hour and a half it took them to drive over. And it has been a very popular seller. So uh, sometimes working in a pinch uh, does good stuff. Do you hire new talent? If so, how can I be a part of the team or at least see the work in person? You know, I, I don't actually have enough work to hire a bunch of people. Um, uh, and, and frankly, I'm fairly efficient as it is. So you know, I, I can get done most of the things. I have uh, Stan who helps me out with uh, the laser work that I do, uh, that I want done, but I don't necessarily want to take the time to learn how to do myself. And then um, Rob will help me out on occasion with uh, pouring up molds if I have a lot of those to do. But I, I just don't have, and Stacy is better at sewing than me, so I have her do a lot of sewing. And uh, she's helping with mold stuff and sculpting now and, and all kinds of stuff. But I just don't have so much work that I hire a bunch of people. So, I mean, that's, you can see from the live feeds, it's mostly just me hanging out. Question on yesterday's Grim Reaper statues that you posted, Scott Holmes. We're right here. Question, Scott. Yes, sir, Scott. On the canvas one, was the adhesive caulk put on the outside exposed part of the canvas or the inside? Outside. It was put on the outside because it'll take paint better and it'll also be rain repellent. Let me show you guys something, something. Say hi, wife. Hey, hi, homies. Can you see them? Yeah, so I moved them. They're both out here. They have both been like hard rained on and they're both fine. Like no sag, no droop. Um, they're both you know, 100%. So, you know, and it's been raining for hours here and very hard. So, you know, they, they hold up. Um, and that's why you put that on there. The canvas one. And if you listen, you know, that, that on the outside there is what keeps it um, safe. And this guy, I mean, this is plastic. This is plastic. So, you see that water just coming off of it? There you go. That was my finger. Okay, now I'm going to go and paint the teeth on Warpigan. The canvas one probably weighs six pounds, and the other one maybe weighs two and a half, three pounds. Um, basically, it is the weight of the one by four frame that's in there, which is just a simple cross. Um, easily is a weird word. It's not easy to remove them, but a little bit. Of, you saw me remove the post from a bucket in the video. It's that. It's that same process. But now I'm just kind of fighting around a a reaper statue with the post in the middle. But they have handles and you can just pick them up by the handle and walk them around wherever they need to go. So because they have handles on them and all the weights in the bottom. And each one, because that was a 40 pound bag of plaster, the base weighs 20 pounds. So the whole thing is 25. Um, yeah. Uh, this is about uh, 
being hired. Thanks for answering. Your work is awesome. I've learned a lot from your videos. And where are you located? Justin Rudy. you got to get off here. See everybody. Have a great night. Good night, Justin. See you, Justin. Because I'm going to take Alan's advice and go make something before I get too tired. Yeah, go make stuff. Good night, Limelight. Good night, Limelight. Who's not actually Lime? <laughs> Kamikaze Kumquat, what a great name. The statues from yesterday reminded me of the Monster Mud statues I have seen. Have you ever used Monster Mud? Is it heavier than the caulk in canvas method? It's about 15 times heavier. Monster Mud is heavy. Uh, that's one of the reasons I don't really like it that much. It's also not waterproof uh, because drywall joint compound is not waterproof. You have to take extra measures to waterproof it, so I don't like it. But, yes, I have used Monster Mud. It was okay. There are things that I like about it, and there are things that I don't like about it. Monster Mud is always out there. It's always an alternative. But it's not the only way to do it. Scott Holmes says, thanks, Kamikaze, for asking that. I've been wanting to do a statue, but I was discouraged by the weight of Monster Mud. Yeah, I, honestly, I'm discouraged by the weight of Monster Mud. And on top of that, it's not waterproof. And probably three or four times a year, I get contacted by someone who is either moving and they don't want to move them or they um, have stopped doing Halloween decorating for some reason and they want to give me their monster mud reaper statues. But I don't, I don't necessarily want them either. I mean, that's a lot of reaper statues. Let's see where we're at. There's Warpigan. Uh, Warpigan is in pretty good shape. He's going to get a glaze as soon as he dries up. There is a white Krampus. Uh, he is in pretty good shape. I might go in with some more dark colors and airbrush him. Uh, we need to do another layer on the teeth here. But that's not quite dry yet. Let's move him into the drying room. And I think I want to brighten the pumpkin up a hair before I move on. drywall joint compound, which is an interior building material. Uh, the film 1982 is who was asking about coming to see the work or being hired. I'm in Houston, Texas, working in Latex, former ceramic studio manager at Texas Renaissance Festival. Oh, very cool. Um, well, uh, just uh, like message me, let me know when you're going to be up in the area, and uh, I can give you a tour of Dark Hour and show you the shop or whatever. Only a couple hour drive. I don't know if you guys can tell, I'm just bringing the orange up a little bit on this. Like this panel was done and this panel was not.
just a little. I don't want him to feel grayed out. I like the black wash. I like that it gave me contrast. I do not want um, grayed out. And now that I have more off of the brush, like I don't have a lot of paint on the brush, now I can be a lot more aggressive and get what I want. Making the gray. How do you think the current situation will affect haunts this year? How will the kids get their candy? Well, haunted houses, uh, I think, will, I mean, about half the haunts in the country are not going to open. It seems like a 50-50. So, obviously, the whole industry is taking a huge hit. Um, I think it's a lot easier to control trick-or-treating and to social distance while trick-or-treating. I think it's a lot easier than to control social distancing at a haunted attraction. I think it's going to be hard for us to do that. Um, so I think haunts are in a rougher spot. You gotta make a lot of changes. Some haunts are opening drive-through, which is gonna be very interesting. The world hasn't really seen that before. So I'm interested to see how that plays out. I'm interested to see how that works insurance-wise and what the fun first-time accidents are gonna be. Um, I, I'm just interested in that. Uh, it could be a cool step forward for our industry and then exist in perpetuity right alongside of pay ride trails. Uh, that's possible. Um, it also could be a terrible disaster that we never do again. Uh, you know, you never know. Um, we're going to have to see. I did an easy Grim Reaper last year using two shepherd books, two pool noodles, and stole a sheet with some switch fabric, but I want to do something different. Well, uh, you have plenty of options out there, but that Grim Reaper sounds cool. And if it was fun, and if it made someone else love Halloween, then I'd say you did it perfectly. Lisa Arden says, Monster Mud Cracks, I used Alex Bedliner method to save them. It's not okay. I've seen people making designs for candy shoots and candy clips on fences for trick or treaters. Harvey, who says, Do it a jack o' lantern well, my friend, I can see a costume for him. And Mary Jordan says, I love that. Funsies. I'm lining everything up so you can see what we did today. Would the caulking method on those statues work with burlap? I have a ton of burlap. Uh, it would. The problem is burlap is so loose weave, it'll take a lot more because it's going to soak in more. And to get into all of those uh, crevices, it's just going to be harder. I had to jump up just and ready for a quick question. I need a new breaking tool. Is there any good home remedies or do you have any videos on making your own guitar strings? I know. Um, I do. I have a video that I made maybe two months back on make your own sculpting tools, and I made breaks on that um, out of scroll saw blades. So yes, you can do that. You can make your own rakes out of scroll saw blades. Gang, these are the masks that we painted tonight. Um, where is the worm? Oh, worm's drying. And I gotta repaint his teeth. I wanna do one more layer on these teeth before I call him good. So let's do that together. And you can look at the work we accomplished today. One of the most satisfying things about my work is that at the end of the day, I can look back and see what I did. Uh, I would imagine it is extremely difficult to feel satisfied in your work when at the end of your day you look at the computer and it still looks the same as when you started. You can't see all the work you did if it happens inside of a computer. Um, but now I can physically see I did this. I painted this. None of these were painted before we started. In the course of what, three hours, four hours, we have five painted masks. Now there's some accoutrement that needs to get done, like there's uh, some a beard that needs to be put on, but I could do that tomorrow in the afternoon. And 
we can see what we did. At the end of the day, we can look back and say, we did that. That's cool. Any kind of work where you work with your hands, like where you're a framer or an electrician or uh, even body work on a car, you know, you can see it. Well, I'm glad you joined us. Uh, thanks so much, Alan Shen, everyone. Thanks for the chat. Enjoy the little bit inspiring. Amazing show, my Alan Curtin. Uh, see you all next time. And the next up, great live feed. Big fan now. Subscribe. This is the five masks that we painted tonight. We did everything here in front of you. Um, and uh, hopefully we answered some questions along the way and maybe created some. Um, they cannot cancel Halloween. Halloween is a date. They cannot cancel my Halloween heart. This is what uh, this is. This is what we do. This is this live stream and making things is how I can help keep Halloween alive. How can you help keep Halloween alive and keep others from saying that it's canceled? Um, wife, would you say good night to these fine people? Good night, fine people. My goodness, that was. Guys, that, was three hours. that was hours and hours and hours. Uh, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, good night and go make stuff. <laughs>